Good morning, squad. How are you doing today? It is day 350 of 365. We're getting there. Um, hey, Featherweight. Hey, Rocket John. Thanks for, for subscribing 17 months in a row. 15 days to go. That is correct. Or is it? No, it is. That's math. This isn't a weird smart ass puzzle. 350, 365 means 15 more to go. Ah, oh, good tea morning. Well, stayed up way too late tonight, last night. Uh, before I get started, I do just want to quickly give a shout out to my friend Adam, uh, who did tweet about the stream yesterday. He also did a, a year-long challenge um, a while ago, and he's been incredibly supportive. He generally doesn't... We stream sometimes at the same time, um, and I do tweet about his stuff, but I do, like, if for some reason you don't know about him, go check him out. He's at twitch.tv slash cbats. He also, I work with him a little bit at Loading Ready Run. He's been doing this great um, series called Spectator Mode over on the Loading Ready Run YouTube channel. So do check that out if you're not familiar with all of that. And again, I forgot to pull out the stylus, but I have rectified that mistake. All right, let's let's continue this game. Let's go figure out which case we want to want to play. Hey, George. All right, we helped the ghost lady. I guess we can move on to case six. What's his thing? Something's been stolen from the brand new vault at the Layman's Reserve Bank. Can Cat get it back? It's from a bank. You would think it was probably gold or some coins or maybe a will, but it's probably wafers. It's always wafers. You should go to bed. I'm gonna go to bed. I don't believe you. You're uh, setting up a chair. Yeah. I just want to say hi. Okay. I'm sure. not moving over because you should go to bed. Hi, everybody. Ooh, a thief cosplay. Yeah. Hi. Hi, what? Well, I'm picking a case. This guy oh. had a thing stolen from a bank. Cool. We're going to get it back. It's probably wafers. I don't know. Oh, it's fine. All right, I'm going to bed. Good. Go to bed. I did so good. I'm sure you did. did so good. Now go and dream about it or something. Yeah, I'm going to relive that entire experience. Mm. It's going to be real weird. I hope you sleep for that long. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, let's just do case six because I think we only get... I think we have to do all of these to open up more cases anyway. So let's just investigate the wafers that got stolen from the bank. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, top screen. That's definitely the place Inspector Hastings asked us to meet him. Yes, in front of the layman's reserve bank, he said. Well, it doesn't appear to be open yet. Wonder what he wants. Maybe it's some problem with the bank. I don't trust banks, apart from Barclays. It's all in the name. Dog. Well, he didn't mention anything like that. He just telephoned the agency and asked him to meet here. That's all. We get a lot of our cases this way. That seems like... I don't know. Maybe we want... We want... We want to start our cases with a consultation phase. Um, that requires people to come to our office. He's always doing this. That man never gets to the point. Well, impressive building, though. Yeah, yeah, the building's great. You know, this. there's nothing awkward when once people start talking about the architecture. Just ten years ago, no one had even heard of this bank. Well, this building doesn't look new. I expect bank bought it from somebody else. It's very important for a bank to portray the right image, you see. In its name, its logo, its office building. Barclays just has a kennel as its logo. I like it. Oh, there's Inspector Hastings now. Coming out from inside the bank. Oh, yes, and he looks troubled. I smell a case in the making. Which is good, because he called us here and I want to get paid. Do we get paid for our detective work? 
Who knows? Ah, oh, there you are, cat. Thanks for coming. Hey, conspiracy. New case. Spot on. In fact, you were asked for it personally. You mean somebody else asked for me to investigate, not you? The new agency's getting quite a name for itself. I said I'd get in touch with you on the gentleman's behalf. I felt quite pleased with myself. Well, I'm glad the agency's becoming more widely known. I'm not sure what that has to do with you. Well, I'm the one who conned on to your great puzzle-solving abilities, aren't I? It takes a keen eye to spot a good investigator, cat. He certainly always had to blow his own trumpet. Trumpet explains the big nose. Rude. Jolly good news that the agency is getting the recognition it deserves. Tribute to your wonderful detective skills. <laughs> Listen to me gassin'. <laughs> Come on, we better go in. The gentleman in question is specifically requested we keep this investigation ush ush. Mum's the word, alright? Well, alright. Let's go in. Gosh, it feels deserted in here without any customers, doesn't it? Oh, there's a woman over there, though. And she's not a customer, that's general manager. Oh, she's very important, then. Yes. They've got branches all over the country. Each one has a branch manager, and that lady there is the manager of all those managers. Oh, the manager of management. The gentleman who asked for us investigation said she'd fill us in. Alright, let's get filled in. Hello, manager of managers. What name did they give you? You're the general manager? Miss Teller. Right. That's right, love. Who are you, coming in here with your dirty dog? We're not open to the public yet. I'm sorry? Gosh, have we done something to offend? Oh, sorry, ma'am. She's not a member of the public. This is the detective who will be investigating your case. Detective? This little girl? Oh, well, you sure she's up to the task? This is a very complicated case, you know. I smell a test puzzle. I do understand, but I assure you Miss Layton is highly accomplished in her field. Well, let's hope so, because I demand perfection. Any slip-ups, and I'll have, to, I'll have to ask you to drop it. Oh, don't worry, I can solve everything. That's my motto or something. Just give me some details to go work off of. Mm, Alright. Yes, KTL Layton and of the Layton Detective Agency. This is my assistant, he won't leave. Oh, well, I'm Bianca Teller. Yeah, yeah. Alright. As you already know, Miss Layton, I'm the general manager of the Layton's Reserve Bank. Oh, please call me Catriel. No, I'd rather not. First names can be a source of confusion. Using people's full names is the perfect solution. This husky is a real barrel of laughs, isn't she? Uh, well, then perhaps you could explain exactly what the problem is. It's a sensitive matter to be treated with complete discretion. Understand? Sure. Your secrets are safe. As safe as this bank's vault. Oh, that's going to be a poor choice of words in a minute, isn't it? Are you being sarcastic? I mean, I wasn't meaning to be. Is there some problem with the bank's vault, then? Yes, I pride myself on perfect security measures here. But we've been the victims of grand larceny. I say, someone robbed the bank. How much was taken? 100 million sterling in notes. Is that, I'm assuming that's a lot. I don't really know. I don't know that currency. 100 million? Million? Wow, somebody actually took something of of money and not like... I'm sorry, did we get an actual crime case? 
because like what we 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 investigated a missing a missing clock hand, which I guess is a crime, but was not really. Um, we investigated a ghost house, the different disappearance of Rat Man, uh, uh, a, a, a murder that wasn't actually a murder. That wasn't a real crime. There was probably another case in there. We actually got a real, 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 real theft thing. All right, cool. How much is 100 million? How many bags of dog biscuits would that buy? I'll buy you all the dog biscuit manufacturers in the world, Cheryl. I don't think I could eat all of them. Are you talking to your dog? You realize the gravity of this case, don't you? It could undermine the whole bank. Trust me to get lumbered with a detective who talks to her dog. Mr. Sloan's. Nice for her especially, Bianca. Oh, Mr. Sloan's. I wasn't expecting you, sir. No weren't you. It's my bank that's been robbed in it. Don't want the boss breathing down your neck, is that it? The boss is a vampire. No. No, of course not, sir. <laughs> well, you clearly aren't taken with my choice of detective, that's for sure uncertain. Please, I want to know your first name, Mr. Sloan's. Oh, no, sir. I'm sure you've chosen perfectly. I'll cooperate with Miss Lady in any way I can. Glad to hear it, because she'll be handling the investigation alongside this good gentleman from Scotland Yard. Beard Empire. Oh yes, of course, sir. Yes, I'm sure I'll we'll get to the bottom of it. Were his boots that shiny when he walked in here, or has someone been licking them? Ooh, shade. It's actually kind of not a bad piece of shade, but wow. At least it means she'll stop treating Miss Layton like a schoolgirl. Nah, only when he's around, at the very least. If you'll excuse me then. And then Mr. Sloan is here, I must be getting on. I'm oh, sorry we haven't- hope we haven't kept you. Just said the branch manager had to be taken into hospital, you see. Gosh, people sustained injuries in the incident? Oh, the doctors say it's not too serious, but he hasn't regained consciousness yet. So, I'm having to fill in for him at the moment. I see. Well, you're obviously very busy. Excuse me, then. So, we've been probably been introduced, have we? I'm Grant Sloan's. Ah, uh, yeah. You cer certainly do. I bet you don't. I bet you don't grant that many loans. Owner of this bank. I have a few businesses, actually. This is just one of them. If I were Madame Dublay, she t who told me about you. So when I spoke to, spoke to Inspector Hastings, I made sure he understood I wanted you on the case. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Sloans. I'll do my best to live up to your expectations. Certainly looks the part, doesn't he? He's a giant. Yeah, it really packs a punch. I'll punch you if you hear so you. Mm, what's that, lad? Oh, uh, no, it's nothing. Ha ha ha. I believe I've seen you before, Mr. Sloans. You read the movie thing that we went and saw. Oh, right, the movie. Right, yes. The missing scene. And not... Not... A real crime was the edit they tried to make after. Yes, that's right, you solved that one as well. Does that mean you're one of the so-called Seven Dragons? Well, it's not a title I'd have chosen for myself. But yes, people do call me that. Anyway, enough chat. Down to business. Alright, informs us you had a break-in. That's an understatement. 100 million quid's hardly a break-in. Is quid the same as sterling? This is why I don't... I don't... I don't know. It is? Okay, cool. I've never... I've never been in that part of the world for one, and I've never really looked at the currency. The only ever thing I ever hear is like, um, uh, on TV shows, quid equals pound equals pound sterling. See, the pound sterling and the pound, that, that makes sense to me. The quid doesn't, but that's fine. Anyway, breaking burglary, grand larceny, whatever you want to call it, it's needs sorting and fast. 
First things first, let's show you here the vault where the money was. It's a good place to start. Right. I already got lads from Yard investigating down there. It's in the basement, of course. That's where we keep all of our vaults. Explain more once we're down there. Hey, Lord Hosk. Thank you for resubscribing. Order is amazing. I'm impressed by day 350. Can't do anything for 10 days in a row. You're amazing. Well, thank you. I'm... I don't know how I got here. <laughs> so this is where the incident took place. That's the Master Vault. 100 million quid and cash went missing. I say it's enormous. Ah, uh, Was the cash made of wafers? That's not a vault, that's a room. Yes, a vault is typically a room. It was discovered missing early this morning. Looks like a classic case of grand larceny, so we've got to catch the crook who did it. Get the dough back. Okay, so chances are good it's still in there. Maybe, like, 50-50 chance at this point it's not even missing yet. You say people from Scotland Yard are already investigating? Have you found any evidence? Not a flaming sausage. Not a flaming sausage. I. That's fantastic. It's weird, but it's fantastic. Would have taken a pro to crack this safe, that's for sure. But even pros leave a trail usually. Oh, not this time. Hmm, that is strange. I'll need to ask some questions. Just before you do... Yes, Mr. Sloans? I think I'd like to see this great mind of yours in action first. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, tuzzle. Puzzle. Tuzzle. Ah, puzzle test. Yes, a tuzzle. A puzzle test. Test puzzle. Ah. I stayed up too late. It's not that I doubt your abilities. I'm giving you a puzzle anyway. So, yeah, this is what happens. You become a puzzle master, and people are just like, Hey, you know what? Uh, I don't believe you. Have this puzzle, prove it to me. And then the other people are like, I believe you. I want to see it. Puzzle. Pestle. Pestle's a good word. Never, de I'll never deal with anyone until I've seen them roll up their sleeves and get their hands dirty with my own eyes. Do you also wish to watch them wash their hands when they're done? Password ABCs. Oh, hey, I think this is another one of them. Yeah, it is. All right. Um. Now what is password to the safe? Six letters long. Use this letters A, B, and C. Use the pointers on the memo to figure out the password. Enter the safe. The same letter is repeated twice in a row in two different places. Alright. Same letter never appears three times or more in a row. Oh no. This isn't like last time where there was no repeats. Ah, oh, good. Okay, Brain, we can do this. Letters A and C appear with the same frequency, which is less than the frequency of letter B. After a C, there is always an A. Okay. Same letters repeated twice in a row in two different places. Same letter never appears three times in a row or more. C and A appear with the same frequency, which is less. Oh 
goodness. I was hoping for something easier to start the morning. Alright, um... So, if we say... There's a C here. There has to be an A. And if does that work? Same letters repeated twice in a row in two different places. Same letter never appears three times or more in a row. Letters A and C appear with less same frequency but less than the frequency of the letter B. And after a C there is always an A. That looks like that could work. B What was it what did I write down? C A C A B B. Is that right? Mm, this should do it, I think. Cool. Any mystery or any puzzle solved. I'm glad that worked, because if it didn't, that might have actually hurt my brain. Okay, so what I did was I wrote down C and A, because I'm like, well, those two have to be here. But if they have to be less than the frequency of B, they can't be at the front because things can't repeat like that. And I don't know, it just worked out. Oh good, my sticker shipped. I bought some stickers on the internet the other day. Well, Mr. Sloans, I hope that instilled some confidence in you about my abilities. Hey, Rocket John. <clears throat> Is my ringtone chipmunk noises? No, it's um, um, it's the sound effect for Perry the Platypus from Phineas and Ferb. And I just use it for texting. All right, well, I hope you're satisfied with my abilities. I could clearly crack a vault. Um, Golly, what's wrong? He's just glaring at us. Miss Leighton! I don't understand. She solved the puzzle. Why he's looking so fierce? Cracking stuff. That's just what I was expecting. Even better. Oh, I, I think that's his pleased look. Remind me never to look when he's upset. Well, thank you. So, will you tell us the details of the case now? Of course, gladly. The mystery of this missing hundred million. It's up to you to solve now. Oh, we'll do very best. Very best like there never was. Give me details. It's a very impressive looking vault. Yes, this is the Hermit 5000. Hermetically sealed and totally indestructible. You could fire a shell from a tank at this thing and the contents would be unharmed. In fact, it's not really enough to call it a vault. This thing is a fortress. Wow, we. Does, does it really need to be so tough? I made it myself. Well, one of the companies I own did. It's, it's the same thing. Oh, really? You own a company that makes vaults for banks? Let me tell you something. It's not just people's money that a bank's vault keeps safe. 
It's the bank's integrity. It's customer's trust. Oh, that would be smashing slogan for your new vault. So as soon as we completed the manufacture of the Hermit 5000, I had it installed here. I thought it would give our customers even more peace of mind. That's what I thought. Can't believe it's been breached so easily. I misjudged that one, and no mistake. Honestly, I don't think about the vaults that the banks have. That I bank at. But I guess we're in mystery England alternate universe time, so... So it's the latest model. Uh, yeah, I think banks still have, have vaults. They still handle cash. A lot of banks also, um... Uh, have safety deposit boxes and stuff, so... I think. Well, maybe. I don't know. I've never actually... I'm basing that off of TV. <laughs> I understand you were the first person on the scene. You're a security guard here, aren't you? That's right. Still can't believe it. How could this have happened? That's what we're trying to find out. Could you tell us what you saw this morning? Well, it's my job to keep watching the foyer over area overnight. See? From when the bank closes one day to the next morning. I was keeping a lookout all night, but I swear I never spotted something, nothing strange. Then, early in the morning, Mr. Shinplaster showed up as usual. He's the boss, you see. Shinplasters. That seems like an unfortunate name. And does Mr. Shin Plasters always come in early to work? Yeah, he's always very busy, so he usually tries to get in before everyone else. He must have had something to do with the vault, because he went straight through the foyer and headed downstairs. Not long after that, I heard him cry out, so I ran down here as quick as I could. And when I got here, the vault door was wide open. Did you look inside the vault at the time? Well, I was worried. I thought there might be a robber in there or something. But I thought I should be brave, so I just peeped in quickly. And that's when I saw the body, flat out on the floor. But that was actually Mr. Shinplasters, wasn't it? It was, and there was no one else about at all. Not in the vault or out of it. What'd you do next? I dialed 999, straight away of course. And then I called Miss Teller. She's the general manager. So... Yeah, I believe 999 is nonsense for, for either, both areas. Okay, you're supposed to call the general manager if there's anything not right, see? When she showed up and saw the vault, she nearly had a heart attack. 100 million quid, gone! So it was Miss Teller who first realized how much was missing? 999 is the UK emergency number? Oh, I thought it was a different one. I thought it had a 4 in it. <laughs> hey Cyclops boy. Get just over. About 15 days. Hmm. It's not my business knowing how much is stashed in the vault sea. When the boys in blue showed up, the ambulances, it was like a carnival. And that's all I can tell you. Well, is that right? Is it right that Mr. Shinplaster still hasn't regained consciousness? That's what I told, yeah. He broke both his legs as well. But they said it wasn't life- ha So, he came down to the vault. You found him unconscious, and he just happened to break both his legs? What? There's a good chance he saw the culprit, though. What a dreadful shame we can't get a statement from him. Yes, that's frustrating. Still, we must push on with the investigation. Hello, 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 what have we here? Miss Layton, her trusty assistant, the one that never leaves. Hello, PC Beat. That's an amazing vault, isn't it? Although, I imagine opening and closing it must be hard work. Mm. I had the same, self-same thought when I saw how thick the door was, but it turns out it's motorized. 
All you have to do is enter the code and press the button, and presto, it opens automatically. So you don't need to be big and burly to open the vault then, I see. Not at all, Miss Layton, even if you'd be able to open it if you knew the code. Just look how thick and heavy this door is. I actually had to stop myself from saying thick. The vault door can only be unlocked by entering the correct passcode, and only three people who know that passcode are Mr. Sloan's himself, Miss Teller, who you met before, and the manager of this branch, Mr. Shin Plasters, who's now in the hospital. So in other words, no one can open the vault apart from those three people I see. When the security guard noticed there was a problem this morning, we found the vault door open already, and the branch manager was out cold on the floor. Two broken legs, for some reason. So, presumably, he was the one who opened the vault then. That's the only explanation we've been able to come up with so far, yeah. Hello, Hulfie. He had a good look at the vault door, but there are no signs of being forced or jemmied. Jemmied? Jemmied. A great big door like this one would be impossible for us to open, surely. Exactly. So either Shin Plasters was coerced into opening the vault, or the criminal slipped in after he'd opened it. There's only two possible explanations, as far as I can tell. Oh, no. There's gonna be others, I'm certain. Oh, good. I'll have to deal with that later. Hmm, yes. Yeah, Shin Plasters being the crook is, is gonna be, uh... Maybe not the actual answer, but definitely the one that you think would be looking at. Mm, after everything we've been told so far, this does seem like a rather strange case, doesn't it? There's no trace of a robbery at all, not a single scrap of evidence. It's exactly the problem we're facing. Now, before we give up hope, let's look around inside the vault. That would be alright, wouldn't it? Of course, I'll give you the guided tour. It's one big room. What tour could I possibly need? He wasn't murdered! He was unconscious. <coughs> what the inside of a vault looks like. It's enormous, isn't it? It's so shiny. The entire thing is made of metal. That's for security. The walls are just as thick as the door and made of heavy metal plate. <laughs> Let them have their fun. Yeah, they don't get to pull out the, the, the tape that often, do they? How can anyone manage to steal anything from such an impenetrable box? The answers are locked within, Ernest. That's why we need to investigate. I can't, I can't not, I cannot, I have to. Oh golly, is this the chalk outline of Shin Plasters, the branch manager? Yep, that's where he was found this morning. It looks like he hit his, he hit, okay, he hit his head. Wow, when you take all the H's out there, that's like, that's rough. It looks like he hit his head when he fell to the floor and knocked himself out, so they took him off in an ambulance, like I said. And the lads mark out where he was found, just in case it turns out to be important. It rather makes it look like a murder scene, doesn't it? Luckily, I don't think there's any chance of that. They say it's, it, his injuries aren't life-threatening. But he hasn't regained consciousness yet. Nope! Book's been away with the fairies ever since he was discovered. I've not heard that phrasing before. Which is a right pain in terms of my investigation. If we could just ask him what he saw, he'd be in a much better position. Yeah, breaking your legs isn't a life-threatening injury. What's this thing? Oh, found a hint coin. Hey, Void. Yes, we did solve the haunted house. 
Oh, I say, what an incredibly large fan. That lad is the heart of the Hermit 5000's ventilation system. Air temperature and humidity are kept constant at all times. Why do you need air conditioning in a vault? People only come here for very short periods of time, surely. We don't just keep cash in our vaults, vaults. Vaults, vaults? Banks, vaults. Wah. You see, we store expensive jewelry and works of art for our customers, too. Things like that can be ruined by even the slightest variations in temperature or humidity. The Hermit 5000 isn't just as strong as an ox, it's as gentle as a lamb to the things inside it as well. Oh, I see. Yes, rather like the air conditioning that is used in museums and art galleries. That's the idea, yes, although I have to confess the fan's been on the blink a bit, so we've had to turn it off. Obviously, that doesn't affect the security of the vault in any way, though. I see. So the inside the vault is managed using the large fan, which is connected to the ventilation system. Alright. 100%. Money was made out of wafers. The ghosts were not real. Uh, but... I, I really did like the haunted house story. It was cute. I like the ending for it, too. We found a big ventilation fan. And this pile of gold. Look, miss. Gold bullion bars, and so many of them. Yes, that's what I expect to see inside a large bank's vault, really. What is that? Have you spotted something? How long do you... has this bullion been in the vault? Do you know? Uh, a month? So... The thief for thieves who stole a hundred million pounds would have also seen this gold. That's true, but Miss Teller informs me that every bar is accounted for. No gold was taken. Why, though? What thief wouldn't be dazzled by all these gold bars? Yeah, it's a bit odd. I'd have had it away, no mistake. I mean, I'm not... Th not that thefts ever crossed my mind. Just speaking hypothetically. I think even you'd struggle to make off with this much gold. It's very heavy. It's not something you'd want to be trying to move in a hurry. Mm, that makes sense. Would have slowed whoever it was down too much. So you think that's why the gold was left untouched? And only the reddies got taken. The reddies. It's only a theory, but yeah, we don't know for sure until we've investigated. Okay, there's still two more things I need to find. Yep, always find your hint coins and lights. Ooh. Oh, right, you're one of the police detectives. Hey, DC Booker. You working on the case? Tell us what you found. Uh, interviewed some people. There were works of art, very expensive pieces of jewelry, as well as gold. Thief or thieves only took banknotes. Um, 100 million sterling. Everything else was untouched. Perhaps whoever it was just couldn't be bothered to go through all the drawers? There are a lot of them. Don't assume the criminal was as bone idle as you. Not bone idle. Perhaps it was just a matter of not having enough time to take everything other than the banknotes. Hmm. Could have a point there, though. Well, according to what it says here, works of art and things can be hard to sell on without leaving a trail. So, my prediction is that the. Some something happened where the fan got turned on by accident or turned off or or something and all the money's actually behind the fan. Nobody stole anything. That's my prediction. Yes, that could be why only the cash was taken. Apart from that, it just says here that I need to carry on investigating inside the vault. Now, how Mr. Shinplasters broke both of his legs uh, that I'm less certain about. His legs are made of wafers. Uh, Hermit 5000 is a proud achievement for our company. 
Or I should say it was. The fact that its security's been breached. Like, this is flaming embarrassment. As for the 100 million, I won't beat around the bush. This could be very well the end of the layman's reserve bank. <clears throat> Gotta bring the scumbag to justice. I'll do my very best to solve the case for you. Please rest assured. Sorry about that, I got a bit hot under the collar. If that's hot under the collar, I certainly don't want to see him angry. Huge ventilation fan, shame's broken down. Oh, I found a whole bunch of hint coins. <clears throat> oh look, there's a puzzle in here. Now, I think if we find a puzzle inside of a bank vault, it's probably not ours to do. Puzzle's value lies in how interesting it is. Let's find out. Number lineup. There's some pieces of paper hanging up with numbers on. And one of them is missing. Which number do you think is written on the missing piece of paper? Alright, so this is a sequencing... Numbers, pieces of paper hanging with numbers on, and one of them is missing. I mean, the tiny child's nose. They're holding it. Zero one 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 blank one three. Oh no, it's nine one zero one one one. Hmm. <laughs> Is an interesting one. And that's how it's done. Cool. Numbers are lined up in order. <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's not where my brain went, but sure. Sure. That's not why I put two, but yeah, okay. I'll take it. Well, with puzzles that interesting to simulate in my mind, I could stand to be a hermit, I think. Are there any more of them in here? I don't want your paw prints all over this nice shiny metal. Stop touching everything. Why'd I put the two then? Because there was, there was a zero, and then there was like... Um, a three later on and I was just like oh maybe the number is that there's so many ones in between basically like one of the ones is part of the, the zero one two three not <laughs> not that they were counting up were these pallets positioned like this smart vault when it was discovered 
Absolutely. Apart from taking the unconscious Mr. Shinplasters away in an ambulance, this seems exactly as it was found. And apparently the missing money was stacked up on these pallets here. Bank notes weren't inside a case or box or anything then? Nope. Not according to Miss Teller's statement, anyway. All those notes would have been rather heavy, wouldn't they? One person alone couldn't have taken them all, surely. Perhaps we're looking for a group of robbers. Mm, that's a fair point. Bank heists are often carried out by more than one person. There's a good chance you're right. I think we've seen enough in here for now. Oh, Miss Layton, have you worked out who did it already? No, I couldn't say just yet. We need to do a little more investigative work first. <clears throat> I'm afraid I've got a few business matters to see to, so I'll leave you to it if that's alright. Absolutely. People don't generally follow me around while I do all my work. No. Oh, okay, cool. Well, ta-ta. With his bank 100 million down, I'd say he's got more than a few business matters to attend to. So then, Cat, as a result of our investigations, here's my theory on what must have happened. Oh, you've been theory, Inspector. What you look so surprised for? I'm a detective. I reckon is the thief, or thieves, must have snuck into the bank sometime last night. Then, he or she, or they, waited for the bank manage, branch manager to come in the morning, when he or she, or they, forced him to enter the security code. But he or she, or they, only nicked the cash because it was the first thing he or she or they saw. Look, it'd be much easier if you just started using they. And they didn't bother with the gold, because it would have slowed them down too much during the getaway. Hey, Snaver Pumpkin! See, the, the problem is the game's pr trying to say the thief is a he or she. It could be either, um, or multiples. But really, they could just use the singular they. It'd be fine. It's trying too hard here. In the end, they boshed shin plasters over the head, made a run for it. Well, what do you reckon? Think I nailed it? It doesn't explain shin plasters' broken legs. Well, they could have done that, but is that really what happened? What? You think I'm wide of the mark to you? Well, the security guard was in the foyer from close of business yesterday, right through until this morning. He claims there wasn't anything unusual in all that time. Well, yeah, but not to mention the fact that immediately after the incident this morning, he says he didn't see anyone other than Mr. Shin Blasters. So apart from being long-winded, your theory also fails to explain how they got in and got out of the bank unnoticed. I suppose you've got a point there. Back to the drawing board, then. Twist was he already broke his legs. His legs are made of wafers. Without the air conditioning in the vault, they just fell apart. What a shame. The bank will be in terrible trouble if we don't solve this soon. A theft of 100 million pounds is gonna be headline news all over the capital. Oh, that's why this is also a hush hush. The press can't get a hold of it. So you mean this incident hasn't been made public yet? It just happened! Why would we do that? No, of course not. No, and Miss Teller's been pretty nosy about it, making sure we under- Pretty- pretty noisy? Whoa. About making sure we understand that's how it's to stay. It's bad news for the bank, this. I'll say, if it's not dealt with in the proper way, it could mean they'd have to close down. So like I said before, mum's the word, got it? But as an officer of the law, I'm- only at liberty to keep this from the public for 24 hours, so we gotta find the dough before the end of the day. Just make sure you don't go telling your neighbors about this or anything, alright? That reminds me, I think we need to ask Miss Teller a few more questions. She had to dash off before, didn't she? Well, she said she'd be in her office. Alright then, gonna go that way. You go ahead. Our clue. 
Bank robbers. Whoever executed the heist somehow managed to get into the bank, open the vault, incapacitate the manager, and make off with 100 million in notes. That's a clue? That's just the situation. Hey, m 2 cdm Oh, nice office. Excuse the intrusion. Oh, Mr. Slopes is in here too. <laughs> that's not a clue, that's a monocuba file. Yeah. Looks like he's doing conversation. Let's interrupt them. Let me make one thing perfectly clear, Bianca. You're the general manager of the Layman's Reserve Bank, so you have to take responsibility when problems like this arise. If it gets out that we've lost 100 million quid, there'll be a rush on the bank. All of our customers will not take their deposits away. If that happens, we're finished. Am I getting through to you? Loud and clear, Mr. Sloans. Alright then, good. Got a lot of faith in you. You'll weather this storm for us. The thing is... What? Nothing. Forget it. Where are you going now? The ventilator. In the hermit's playing up. I've got to call the maintenance fellow and get him to take a look at it. I see. Bianca, if you've got some summit to say, spit it out. Summit. No, really, it's, it's nothing. Alright then, if you're sure, I'll be off. Make sure you see to all Shinplaster's jobs as well, won't you? Yeah, I will. Golly, they're a real fix, aren't they? I mean, yeah, all their money from the bank has basically been taken. Ah, uh, Miss Layton, I didn't see you there. How's the investigation coming? Oh, well, I think we'd just like to have a word with Miss Teller. Oh, be my guest. Ta-ta. Oh, it's you. I thought you were supposed to be investigating the robbery. Yes, that's what we're doing. Well, I'm very busy, so something you need from me. Could we keep it short? Sure. Why not? So, you want to ask me something? That's right. I understand the disappearance of the money from the vault hasn't been made public yet. Obviously, the bank doesn't intend to keep something like this a secret forever. But there could be repercussions far beyond the Layman's Reserve Bank itself. What do you mean? I mean that the disappearance of 100 million pounds is likely to cause widespread financial uncertainty. And not just in London, all over the country. People will panic. That's why I've asked Inspector Hastings to keep this matter quiet until we've sorted it out as best as we can. When the time is right, we'll issue a press release and the bank will take full responsibility for any areas where its handling of the situation has been less than perfect. Oh, I see. Thank you. That explains it. Explains nothing. Gosh, miss, I knew it was serious, but I didn't realize this was serious. We have to find that missing money. Oops. Didn't mean to tap that. Right. Um, well, I guess I'll just uh, snoop around your desk. Take these hand coins. Don't mind me. Just, uh, checking your lights. It's where hint coins like to hide. Oh look, a plate puzzle. Oh, this is a jolly fine plate. It's alright. Personally, I find the puzzle that's behind it more interesting. Oh, I hadn't noticed. What a funny place to hide a puzzle. Ah, well, not in our world. Traffic jam. Here is a tale of a road plagued by traffic jams. The road has two lanes and is quite narrow, so two cars can only just drive alongside each other. If the road is jammed up for an hour, there are 100 cars in the queue, and if it's jammed up for two hours, there are 200. If the only possible cause of the traffic jam is cars, what would be the minimum number of cars that could cause a three hour delay? I mean... So 100 cars in an hour. It's jammed for two hours, so 200. I'd have 
to be... Yeah. Ugh. All right, let's find out. Are you this way? If you'll entertain my idea here. Yep. Still no patch on this Leighton, of course. All right. If the first car is parked sideways, sure. If it's parked sideways, that's enough to cause the jam. Yep. Yep. Hey, you block. Thanks for that cheer. Classic Leighton puzzle answer. Yep. It's gotten to this point where I feel like the first the first thing when you get a uh, get a puzzle, it's like, what number do you think you should put in? You should just try putting in a zero or one. Don't even read the question. There, I did it. I solved it. Well, so you did just as well. Can't have my assistant being poor at puzzles. So no need to worry. I won't let you down. Hey, look, a safe. Oh, look at that cute little safe. A world apart from the vault we were looking at before, isn't it? Perhaps we should install a safe like that in the office. I don't have anything valuable enough to put in the safe. Or much money to speak of. You're interested in my safe now, are you? Well, obviously it's tiny compared to the Hermit 5000, but Mr. Sloan's had this one put in as well. The Liar Princess and the Blind Prince? I've seen, um... Uh, I've seen posts about that. I've been... I've been meaning to look at that one. Because I like the art style of it. So it was made by his company as well? Yes, although I don't know much about his business affairs outside of the bank. Apparently, he markets these little safes as being as tough as banks' vaults. Markster. Your boss is a very shrewd businessman, obviously. Mr. Sloan's is the perfect example of a manager as far as I'm concerned. Until now, he's mainly focused on the financial sector, but I think he's intending to branch out into other areas. Oh, he really is an impressive man. Quite extraordinary that in just ten years the Layman's Reserve Bank has opened branches all over the country. Oh. What do we find? Ooh, a gift box. Ours now. Let's just look at your documentation on your desk. That's fine, right? It's private ba business, bank business, thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a habit being a snoop. You do seem to have an awful lot of documents there, though. What? Nah, no, they're all just insurance documents. Not that it's anything to do with you. I didn't realize the Laban's Reserve Bank offered insurance as well. It's a new line of business you're pursuing. No, this isn't insurance for our customers. This is our sh insurance. The bank takes out insurance against unforeseen mishaps and the like. Ah. Hmm. Well. If a person did do this on purpose, it is clearly uh, Mr. Voltzman. If there was a fire or some other unforeseen disaster, we get a payout to cover any losses. This is certainly an unforeseen disaster, a bank robbery on this scale. It's true, it just goes to show you never know what's around the corner. So the bank is insured. That's an actual clue. Game. Well, I think we've got the information we needed now. I don't see what any, had any nothing of that had to do with the robbery. Oh, don't worry, that'll help a lot. Oh, don't you think I'm up to the task? What? Oh, I I didn't mean that. Doesn't matter. Once all this is blown over, I expect I'll be saying goodbye to my role as general manager. In any case, well, that's not fair. I mean, it's not your fault, is it? It's the fault of whoever stole the money. Even so, the buck stops with me. I have to take responsibility for the bank's problems. I don't imagine. Well, 
I can't see you catching the criminals. Oh, don't worry, Miss Teller. Miss Layton's never been stumped by Mr. Yet. I've no doubt she'll figure out who did this. Hmm, never been stumped. Well, I suppose I should be reassured. The music just stopped. Oh, it came back. find out anything useful? She was very helpful. Although I don't think she believed I was asking her to be relevant. Not relevant. What on earth were you wasting time for then? Oh no, it's not a waste of time. Sometimes what seems irrelevant at first can later turn out to be a crucial piece of information. So really, any topic of conversation at all could be considered vital to the case. Yes, well I suppose I can relate to that. It's the same in business. Oh really? Talking to your business partners face to face is the only way you can get to know them. And them, you. They say that most new business starts from an informal chat. So I fully understand how important it is to talk with folk. It's just a shame. Well, I'm not the greatest conversationalist myself. No, no, I can see that. Miss, per perhaps you shouldn't be quite so brutally honest? Come to think of it, I haven't had a good chat with Bianca for a while. Not a proper one, anyway. <laughs> you think Bianca Teller is bad? Uh, Mr. Sloan's first name is Grant. We used to have some qu quite involved conversations about business and the like. Oh, I didn't realize you ha and she had that kind of relationship. She's a cracking businesswoman, is Bianca. Always seeking perfection. I've had no qualms leaving the running of the bank in her hands for all these years. Anyway, I think I've done enough gassing. There's a summit about you. I just find myself telling you stuff. I suppose that's the detective in you, eh? <laughs> Our old nemesis, Rob Banks. Oh, that would be pretty funny. I suppose it is. Well, anyway, back to the matter at hand. What's your next move? So it's either him... Or I think it might even possibly be, uh, our, our suspects are s essentially, uh, Shinplasters, Sloanes, or, uh, Miss Teller. Mr. Sloan seems the most likely right now. Let's see, I'd like to have a look around inside the bank. Outside the bank. Is that relevant? And you like to keep people guessing, don't you? Well, I'm looking forward to hearing you take on this whole affair once you finish your investigations. Wanna go outside the bank? What are we doing outside? Robbery happened inside the bank. That's true, but other than the missing hundred million in notes, we haven't found a single trace of criminal activity. So I was wondering if we may have better luck here asking people if they noticed anything unusual last night. Hmm, maybe someone even saw the culprit. Oh, that's odd. What is it? Look at that, the banner hanging down from the bank building up there. There's something not right about it. Oh, tetchy. No, I mean, there's something strange about it. I just can't put my finger on it. Alright then, we can investigate the banner at the same time as asking people if they've noticed anything. Eh, banner. Apparently I can't. Alright, let's start with this one. Wow. It's, it's, it's practically cam. I'm around here, I found a few in the gutter before. Can we help? I'm rather wizard at finding things, actually. Who are you? Who says I'm something for any- something anyway? Like, this kind of looks like a puppet version of Cam. Like, a little bit like a Muppet. Yeah, scarf. A scarf and a sweater. Who are you? Who says I'm looking for something anyway? The latent version of Cam. 
Well, you did just now. You were saying how you'd found a few in the gutter before. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. You're hearing things. You want to get your ears cleaned out? Shady. Definitely shady. Excuse me. I was wondering if you'd noticed anything strange around here, say last night or this morning. Mm? No, I don't really know. This is so-called business district, open bracket, boring, close bracket. After hours, everyone goes home. It's pretty deserted. If anything happened here last night or early this morning, I doubt anyone would have seen it. Oh, I see. Great, there goes that idea. Uh, if I talk to you, you're just gonna give me a puzzle, aren't you? Oh, Mr. Tor. Um, for those of you who weren't around, uh, this guy's first name is Eddie. He's the editor of a movie. I didn't know you banked here. Oh, hello, Miss Layden. I don't know where I'm at, to be honest. Mav sent me this puzzle and I just can't solve it. Oh, Mr. Rector, who is known as Maverick D. Rector, the director of films, such puzzles? Sometimes, yes. You couldn't help me solve it, could you? Here, let me show it to you. The color. The money of color. There is a wall with 12 sections that need to be painted red, blue, and purple. Just like the one in the picture. A pot of paint for one section costs... 10 for red, 10 for blue, 30 for purple. How much is the paint going to cost? Try to figure out the minimum possible price. Alright, so... A wall with 12 sections that need to be painted. When you say section... You mean the one square? Or do you mean the squares that are all connected? Minimum possible price. It's probably something dumb like 50. Interesting one. Oh, oh, really? That's not like me. Okay. Twelve sections red, blue, purple. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I need to math that. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five. That's 50. Two, three, four, five. That's 50. Uh, and these two mix red and blue together. 20, 40. 140. how to solve this now. What? Oh, that's not like me. If you just buy pots of paint to match the colors shown in the picture, it will cost 160. I... I wrote 140. Did it mess, mess up what my 4 looked like? No. Uh... I made too much purple. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, because if I use... Oh, that, that makes sense. You're right. 
I mix two paint cans together, it doesn't become one paint can. That's fair. I've seen how to solve this now. Not good, Catriel, not good. And that was me doing math badly. In my head. It should be one for me. Eh. Yeah, 120. This is an interesting Whoops. one. And that's how it's done. My brain was like, you gotta take one ca paint can away. Right, that's worth 10. So 30. Uh, brain. Did that help? Brilliant. You made that look easy. I suppose you detectives are primed for puzzle solving. I'll buy you in mind next time I'm stuck. Okay, so there's something fishy with the banner. But I can't seem to investigate it. What about this door? That's a hint coin. You're fishy. Hold on, I'm not looking for anything. I'm just thinking about something. What are you looking for? Oh, here we go. Ah, it's lack of banner. And no, that's what's not right about the banner. It's left. In other words, there isn't one on the other side, so it looks unbalanced. Unbalanced, yes, I suppose it does miss. And you expect to see one hanging down on the other side of the bank entrance as well. Barclays would never have only one banner. I don't suppose it could have anything to do with the robbery. Hmm, I wonder if it could possibly be connected. You see what I see? That young man over there, you mean? Yeah, he's been loitering around here looking dodgy for a while now. I just noticed his name. Hey, Shady. Oh man, I hope his first name is Slim. He's hightailing it. He went that way, towards the river. I knew he was suspicious from the beginning. For sure, cat. It was all you. Nothing to do with old Cheryl O.C. clones here. He's clearly behaving strangely ever since we first spotted him. Well, I thought so anyway. Alright, after him. This case is hotting up. <laughs> I think we might have just found the lead we're looking for. He must have come this way. Perhaps he slipped off down a side street or something. Well, I think it would be worth asking people around here if they've seen more anyone suspicious. How about you? Something puzzling you? Did you see a young man running past here, wearing glasses and acting secretively? Ha. Sir? I heard you, lass. Can't help you, sorry. Enough problems of me own. Can't believe I've lost it. It means the world to me, that picture, so it does. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. Did you drop it somewhere? Oh, you're one of those, are you? Of course I dropped it. Twas my shirt pocket, it must have fallen out. I looked all over, can't find it. And there was a fair wind just before dawn this morning, so I expect it's been blown away. Tell you what. Why don't you have a go at this brain teaser? I know about a photo. I could do with a laugh. I lost a photo. It's very important that I find it. Here, do this puzzle. There's a girl selling ice cream at a stall 
on a viewing platform. A boy with a camera comes along, takes a boy girl shot? Sure. What is the minimum number of people that could have been on the viewing platform when the photo was taken? Or, uh, it might be one. It doesn't say that he's on the platform. <sighs> it's either one or two, and given how this game likes to work. So, in conclusion. Nope, okay, cool. Miss Layton would never have got that wrong. <laughs> Try to figure out who was there. people that could have been on the viewing platform when the photo was taken to to I have a feeling that perhaps yeah still not a patch on this Layton of course this might have fooled people before selfies were a thing I mean this game came out in a a time where selfies were a thing. But who knows when that puzzle was written? Psalm Tam. Sure. Stone the Crows. That was not bad. Wow, violent. I'm impressed, so I am. Hang on. Now what's this now? You found something. photo. I thought I lost it. But after finding it in my other pocket. Ah, uh, yes, I've done that. Not with photos, but with items. Oh, that's smashing. I'm pleased for you. Som Tam is green papaya salad. Ah. Oh, a Thai dish. Okay, cool. Remind me what was it you wanted before. You said you were looking for specs, was it? And we're looking for a very young man wearing glasses. Very suspicious looking young man. Oh, that fellow acting all weird like he's got some big secret? You mean he was heading for the bridge? Oh, thanks. Where did he go? Little Terrier, he's giving us a slip again. Hey, look! You see that? There's a piece of cloth or something over there. Oh, it looks like the banner from the bank building. Banner of shame, you're right. Why would a banner from a bank end up all the way over there? That is a puzzler. Oh, hey, it's Douglas Dirt. Hello there. Where have you seen a Layton? There's a story in the making, as we say in the office. So come on, what's the dirt? Over there, you see? There's a banner snagged on the bridge. Cora blimey. So there is indeed. Perhaps I think this could have something to do with the rather strong wind that was blowing just before dawn this morn. It blew itself out almost straight away, mind you. Yes, I think that would explain how the banner has come to be caught on the bridge. All the way from the bank? Gosh, I must have been a veritable hurricane. Didn't notice a thing in the night, though. Enough of this windbaggery. Dish the dirt, come on. He thinks you're working on a case. What's the deal? Remember not to mention the hundred... Don't worry, Cheryl. I'm afraid we've nothing to tell you, Doug. I'm just out walking my dog. Mm, I believe that, but my dirt alarm is bleeping like a radar in the blitz. No sign of the suspicious-looking chap. Might as well head off the bridge, then, I suppose. It's all right. So the banner was blown here in a strong gust of wind. A very strong gust. <laughs> you 
Yeah, I'm not really fond of his constant camera clicking. It'd be nice if he at least lifted the camera to his face. I don't know what he's taking shots of. Oh, we're gonna look at the banner. I wonder if someone from the bank will come to retrieve the banner. We should let them know it's here. Who is this? Oh look, it's your doggy friend. Oh, him. Might as well ask him if he's seen the chap we're looking for. Yeah, he might have some useful information. Alright, I'll go say hi. How's it hanging? Still sleuthing? Yep. You really worked too hard, you know that. So what are you chasing today? A dodgy looking guy wearing glasses. Looks like he's hunting for something the whole time. Seen anyone like that? Mm, there was a guy kind of like that who walked past not long ago. Remember, because he wasn't looking where he was going and nearly trod on my paw. Sounds like our man. Which way? Over there. Across to the opposite side of the river. Can't say he's still there now, though. Thanks anyway. Hounds help hounds, right? But yeah, I tell you what, right now I'm good for eats. But when you go and gets tough, maybe you could share one of your bones with me or something? No problem. I've got some biscuits with your name on them for dessert, too. Ah, now you're talking. Find out anything? Yeah, he went to the other side of the river. Alright, let's go after Mr. Shady. Which is actually his name, except with two E's. Oh no, he's not over here. Unless that's him way in the background. Nope. Let's talk to this guy. No, wait. Uh, let's talk to... Is he the engineer? Ah, detectives. I'm going out, but there's a problem. Problem? Would it help to tell us about it? No, yes. Problem is puzzle. Here, have puzzle. Ride the rails. There are four railways running parallel to each other, and each has four stations. Costs two to travel through unlimited stations on one railway line. Costs one per station to travel on a bus that links vertically adjacent stations on different railway lines. It's the cheapest possible route from the station at the bottom left, taking in all three of the red along the way. No other possible mode of transport. Alright, that hurt my brain. Four railways running parallel. Costs two to travel through unlimited stations on one railway line. One per station to travel on a bus that links vertically the cheapest possible route from the station at the bottom left it wants to take in all three Travel through unlimited one per station on bus. So, hmm. I don't know why you would want to do this. We went that way and then up like that. That's a direct route. This is the cheapest route. Two, three, six, seven, like nine dollars. Thank you. 
two dollars. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that's eleven. Does my two dollars on my one railway line last all day? I am putting in the cost, right? I've seen how to solve this now. Okay, cool. Puzzles are made for solving. that? Does that solve your problem? No, yes. So this is an answer. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Fisher. You haven't seen a suspicious-looking chap passing this way, have you? Suspicious-looking chap? Fishy, you mean? Oh, I feel like I might have. Yes, or did I? This is a puzzle my old man once sent me once. See, I feel like I can't concentrate on anything. I'm afraid you've rather lost me. It's no good. If I can't get this puzzle out of my mind, I'll never be able to think about anything else ever again. Ever. A cold fish. There is a sunny island that is always... It's always warm. A popular fish sold at the shops is packed in ice to keep it at the optimum temperature for freshness. It needs two blocks for one day and three blocks for two days. So, for example, five blocks would be required for three days. Okay. A new fish has just been caught. What's the minimum number of ice blocks needed to keep it fresh for one week? Okay, it needs two blocks for one day, three blocks for two days. Five blocks would be required for three days. We need to keep it for seven. So... Two... Three... Five... Seven days. It's weird. We only leave up one block if it's for two days, but we leave up another two blocks if it's for three. number of ice blocks need to keep it fresh for one week. Mm -hmm. Plus 
one, this is adding two, so, so two plus one plus two plus three maybe? I think it's an exponential. another block, then this would be eight. This would be two plus one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Twelve, seventeen, twenty-three. Seems like a lot of ice. I don't know if this is the way they're going with it, though. Well, let's just see if that works out. It doesn't seem right. I eat puzzles like this for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, this fell over. This dog won't hunt, eh? Try thinking of ways to keep the fish fresh. Uh... Alright, there is a catch to this. Minimum number of ice blocks. Alright, what hints do you have for this? Picture the scenario of trying to preserve the fish and figure out a way to reduce the number of ice blocks required. Okay, well... I guess... If... It takes me... three blocks for two days, and I just add three more blocks every two days, instead of all at once, that could work. I think that gives me 20 if I do that. Unless I do 5, 3. Three by. Three by three is nine. Ugh. Let me think of that. Three blocks for two days. So three, six, yeah, nine. We cover six days. Right, so I do five and five, that's ten. I do the last day, that's 11, but if I go 3, 6, Puzzle's got some bite. Nope. All right. <laughs> I haven't got my paw in today. <laughs> to keep. 
keep it fresh for one week or seven days, you need blocks for two days plus two days plus two days plus one day, making a total of 11 blocks. But there's a way to keep it fresh that would require less blocks. Huh. Okay, game knew what I was thinking. The fish you need to keep fresh for a week has only just been caught, and it's still very lively. Why do I get the feeling that the answer is zero? You put the fish in a tank and let it live. You don't need any ice blocks, do you? Good puzzle is something you have to chew over. I ain't nothing but a hound dog. I like how at the beginning of this puzzle, people we were like, this doesn't seem like a latent puzzle. No, no, absolutely, 100% latent puzzle. It was the most late. <laughs> Brilliant, now I can answer that puzzle. I think I can think clearly. Now what were you saying? I was wondering if you'd seen a suspicious looking chap. Ah yes, I remember. You, oh, did you see him? Ah, I can't rightly say if he was fishy or not. Not my thing. I did see a fellow wearing glasses. He was weaving about like a lost soul. Seemed to be heading for the wharf. Oh, thank you Mr. Fish here. If we hurry, we might catch up with him. Ah, so scamps leading us all around the houses. Wish I had sweat glands. Don't worry, Cheryl. I think it's nearly over today. Today's pavement pounding, that is. Pavement pound. Don't say that. You know I get edgy when we're near Battersea. Do I? Alright. I think we've cornered our man at last. Oh, there he is. Here you are. Just gonna... Excuse me. right now with no explanation just this photo there we go <clears throat> not you again who are you anyway I'd just like to ask you a few questions that's all why, I don't even know you. Look, I'm busy, alright? Get out of my way. Got itchy paws, have you? Sir, I'm afraid we must insist. Stop blocking my way. I simply want to ask you some questions, that's all. Why are you so desperate to get away? Because you're a bank robber, perhaps. That's it, pinstripes. Lay it on him, now. Make him squirm. Bank robber? What are you talking about? That's crazy. The only thing I know about bank robbery is this. <laughs> Puzzles. Oh, Late security. There's a mysterious thief after the treasure. Keep the jewels safe by activating the security system. Surround the two jewels with lit up panels to protect them. Touching a panel makes it light up red. Then when the system is activated, the adjacent panel in the direction of the arrow lights up. And this continues until there are no more panels in the sequence. Which panel needs to be lit up first? Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, oops. I want that. I want this. 
Okay. I need to touch one panel. Um, let's say it was this one. I think I'm right. cover all the squares, right? I just have to surround the two jewels with lit up panels. What? Oops, I did that line wrong. I've seen no. how to solve this now. I drew a line What's wrong. What's the matter with me today? So I didn't memo properly. Yes, no, I saw that game. Thanks. Right, yep. I don't know why I thought that arrow went in that direction. So those go down that way. If that goes that way, it's gonna just go back and forth. So that's not correct. Just go back and forth. Do it, I think. Any mystery or any puzzle solved. You did it. Security system has been successfully activated. Now the thief can't get anywhere near. So what you're saying is the only thing you know about robbing banks is that security systems keep thieves out. There's no way someone like me could rob a bank, is there? I mean, think about it. You don't fit the typical pattern, I admit. Bank robbers don't tend to linger about on the streets. That's what I've been telling you the whole time. In that case, what were you doing outside the bank before? You were looking for something, weren't you? No. Uh, get your dog under control. He keeps growling at me. Yes, and if you don't start telling us the truth, he's going to sink his teeth into your butt. First the left cheek, then the right. Now he's being cheeky. That's not in my contract. All right, all right, I'll tell you the truth. I was picking up money outside the bank. Money? Yeah, I don't know why, but I keep finding 50s lying around on the street. Oh my. That ventilation system goes right outside. So then I started looking around for more. I found some in the river, too, and on the bridge. And of course, it's off. So... Um... I guess there was just a large wind? I wasn't really looking where I was going most of the time. I was just following the notes. You mean, you haven't deliberately been running away from us? Didn't even know you were chasing me. Oh, it sounds rather like we've been pursuing the wrong man. Hmm, I think he's telling us the truth. That was a dud lead. But why is he finding all these banknotes around the place? And so that's curious, and the worst thing is... What? He's getting to them before I am. Those notes should have been mine. Cash, behave yourself. Sorry, Shell. Only joking. Don't want my behind bitten. I don't bite behind, so don't bite anything apart from my tongue most of the time. So, banknotes lying around in the street of Layman's Reserve Bank on the bridge and along the river, huh? Oh. Check it out. Solve case, solve case. I still think it's possible 
that um, even though that happened, uh, uh, this could be insurance fraud. This could be a, this could have been set up on purpose, but it is late in game, so possibly not. That's it, no question. This mystery is history. You've solved it? In that case, we should get back to the bank, shouldn't we? Gather all the relevant parties. Yes. There's just something I need to take care of first. Could you get in touch with everyone let them know the situation? Of course. Leave it to me. Yeah, you sure you've cracked it? You even got the wrong end of the stick or anything? No pressure or anything, but you know, 100 million quid at all. Relax, Shrill. My deduction is as safe as houses. Let's just hope it's safer than the bank's safe was. I get the right message? You cracked it? Where's the hundred million then? Patience, Inspector. Let's wait for Miss Teller to arrive, shall we? You can fill her in later. Mr. Sloan's is here. I'm sure he can't wait to find out the truth. I think we should wait for Bianca, like the last says. You do? Oh, fine. I'm sure he won't be long. she won't be long anyway. Ernest has already gone to fetch her. Ah, here she is. Apparently you think you found the missing money? Good, now everyone's here. Let's go to the vault and talk about what happened. Hearing that 100 million pounds had disappeared, we all naturally assumed that someone had stolen it, or hidden it somewhere. But in fact, it literally did disappear. I get it, yes. It's all about perspective, eh? It disappeared because it was never there in the first place. Oh, it was there. But the question is, where is it now? And the answer is gone with the wind. You've got to stop watching that film, Cat. All those crisp notes carried away on the breeze to become the property of the vast sky oh. where greed and wealth mean nothing the sky is rich have i mentioned this nice little place i know where people look after you in crisp oh shut notes. up cheryl crisp the money is gone it's the property of the heavens now isn't that right oh hell oh she knew you can't be serious Yes, Miss Layton. You're right. Well done. Kill me now, or tell me it's the 1st of April. Cat, come on. Explain before my head explodes. A vault for such large sums of money naturally calls for... extremely thick, impenetrable walls. As a result, the interior is a hermetically sealed environment. A completely airtight box. No one could steal anything from such a place, surely. Yeah, exactly. And that would include the wind. Sealed environments need aircon to stop their content spoiling. And that's the key to this case. Sadly, the brand new air conditioning unit in the vault malfunctioned on the night in question, leaving a near vacuum inside. Early this morning, the poor, unsuspecting branch manager came in to check on the vault, opening the door and breaking the seal. The sudden rush of external air caused all the notes to be sucked into the ventilation system and ejected out into the night sky over London. I mean, Money Tornado is kind of fantastic. I'll be blind. That poor man broke his legs by basically getting himself sucked into a cash tornado. And of course, while a theft would have entitled the bank to an insurance payout, an accident like this is the bank's responsibility. So who's actually to blame then? If I had to identify a culprit in this case, it would be the person from the bank who resolved to dress up the truth as grand larceny. The Layman's Reserve Bank's general manager, you, Miss Teller. Oh, I've given my all to this bank over the years. It's over now, I suppose. I can't possibly hope to keep my job after this. Can't you? I mean, generally, that would get you arrested. 
it's fraud, you work in a bank, which is a place of trust, uh, you broke that trust. You, you can't keep your job. Catriel. Sorry. I don't want you to quit, Bianca. Is she getting promoted? That Mr. fits my worldview. Sloans, but I... Miss Layton explained everything to me earlier, so I got the boffins on the job. By analyzing the wind direction, we worked out a plan and sent out the cleaners to fetch the money back. We got about 80% of it. Damage control, you could say. I thought they could get that much of it back is kind of amazing, but also still still not sure how, how this helps her keep her job. Really? Oh, thank goodness. That's not to say the remaining 20% isn't going to sting. Not 20 million pounds, that's quite a loss. That's still a lot. Still a lot. Of course. No, this is not okay. But in some ways, 20 million is a small price to pay. No, it's not. Mr. Sloan's, for one thing, your vault clearly has a design flaw then that you need to fix, and that's done by your company. Also, she tried to... No. It's not. Sorry? That new vault, the Hermit 5000, is a product of one of my affiliate companies. If we hadn't identified this malfunction before we'd sold it to countless other banks, we could have been in for damages far exceeding 20 million. I mean, that's true, but there's still not... So, I've arranged it that my vault manufacturing firm will compensate the loss. Well... The bank can continue to operate as normal. Your vault company must do very well to take a 20 million loss and not be bankrupt. <sighs> oh, Mr. Sloan. <laughs> Thank you so much. That still doesn't <laughs> negate what she did. Oh, I hope you'll continue to do the sterling work you've done up to now for the bank. Catriel, if you have a bank account here, leave. Get a different bank. Definitely. Must say, that was a truly inspiring piece of detective work. I mean, I'd like to say that was a really, really great. It was a really great animation scene to see a money tornado. <sighs> Hear that cat? Pinstripes is a big fan. Like the surprising cause of this whole case. I don't know how you worked it out. No one else could have ever arrived at such an obscure truth, I'm quite sure. You're a sensation, miss. I mean, clearly someone else did. They had to pull it off as... Uh, thank you, Ernest. Oh, that reminds me. You received these flowers earlier. I'll put them in a vase later. Oh, they're beautiful. Who sent them? Mr. Sloan's. He said he wanted to thank you again for helping sorting everything out. He's a little overbearing to look at. <laughs> That's rude. But he's a very kind man, actually. Yeah, I can't believe he didn't give that general manager of his the boot. Neither can I. I think perhaps he's misunderstood because of his appearance. I'll have to tell him it would be nice to meet informally sometime and chat about something other than business. Like, like... I'm I'm cool with the idea if he doesn't want to like be all I don't want I don't want bad things to happen to you because you were just trying to protect the bank but you can't work here anymore. I have many other affiliate companies you could also work at and we could give you a high position or something else. That would be at least still not what I think should happen, but at least more plausible, a little bit more uh likely. You know, it's like when the mayor got to still keep being the mayor because they determined she still needed to be the head of the planning committee for that other thing, even though she could have stepped down as mayor like she wanted to and still done the thing. Ugh, video game. Video game. I have to tell him it would be nice to meet informally sometime and chat about something other than business. You're a braver person than me. Apparently, Mr. Shinplasters, the branch manager, has regained consciousness, too. And his legs are on the bend, too. Oh my goodness. Mr. Shinplasters, I hope all of your medical bills are being covered by the bank. 
because wow yes they should be lucky guy missed the whole thing it's amazing to think that 20 million pounds is still missing though isn't it wonder where it all ended up not in my pocket sadly not even one note I know it's like a dream isn't it money just raining down from the sky that would be amazing wait that money you put in your desk drawer before Miss Layton don't tell me you of course not that was payment for solving the case oh ha huh. I'm sorry I didn't mean to imply after the incident they plated the vault in gold <laughs> The bank had a brand new vault installed, the Hermit Mega Safe. Now the Layman's Reserve Bank has the very safest of safes and the most balanced of banners. Who could fail to trust them with their hard-earned cash? I would go to a different bank. Go into Barclays. I... I don't even want to read that case, Coda. New minigame things... Ugh. I did like seeing the bunny tornado animation, though. That was cool. So far, I think my favorite case out of this game has been the haunted house. Because I like the resolution of that. That one was just really sweet. This... this one... Well... You know. We have left. Case 8. Uh, we've got about an hour. I guess we could start on it. Cat and Cope been invited to a luxury cruise. But will the golden goddess in the Grand Lounge keep smiling? Considering they would have to disclose the loss if they were a public company, they probably wouldn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they said that, if they said why, if they said, if they stated, you know, oh, well, you know, money tornado, 20 million just went missing, you'd be like, no. Alright, let's go investigate the goddess of the Thames. We might not get all the way through this one, but, today, but we'll get started on it. I say, what a smashing vessel. It's much more luxurious than I'd imagined. And I don't even have my own kennel. So this is the... I don't even... Thame Tan... Tanic? Titanic. Thame Tanic. Really? That's a terrible name. Absolutely terrible. No. This is a boat. This is McBoatington. She's studying, isn't she? I can't believe we'll be sailing on her. I was picturing something much less grand. After all, it's described as an affordable yet luxury cruise ship. What's an affordable yet luxury ship when it's at home? I heard it was supposed to be a small cruise ship that the average member of the public could afford to enjoy. This is small? It certainly doesn't look small, does it? Gosh, just imagine what the inside is going to be like. I never dreamt I'd ever travel on a ship like this. No, nor do I. And we certainly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Madame Dubly giving us those tickets. I'm so excited about the party too, cruising down the Thames, hobnobbing with London's elite. Ticket says in celebration of the maiden voyage of the of of McBody Face. It's all very fancy, isn't it? Maybe old Double Chin isn't really fat at all. Maybe it's all money stuffed up her dress. Whoa! Cheryl! Bad dog! Three tickets on a cruise like this must have cost a small fortune. Definitely. She even arranged it so that you could come, Cheryl. Dogs aren't usually allowed on board, so maybe stop being so rude. As a fellow pet lover, she obviously threw her weight around a little for us. 
And I owe her a look for saving me from the boredom of the office. Just hope it isn't too rough. Now, Artis, you did bring all the luggage, didn't you? Oh, yes, miss. I just entrusted it to a deckhand a little while ago. He said it would be taken to our cabins later. I must say your case was particularly heavy. What did you pack? Oh, was it really that heavy? I only put in essentials, you know, night armor. Gosh, I didn't realize essentials could weigh so much. She's probably got a kitchen sink in there. Cat, what the dickens are you doing here? Ah, good evening, Inspector Hastings. Have you been invited on to the maiden voyage as well? Yeah. I said it was a thank you for all the hard work I've been helping her with. Couldn't very well refuse. Ah, Madam invited us too. Oh, thank heavens for that. I was starting to wonder who I could talk to. I suppose the rest of the guests will all be millionaires, given that we seem to have like seven of those in town. I don't know. McBodyface is supposed to be an affordable yet luxury cruise ship, accessible to all. Pah, yeah, it looks highly accessible. These well-to-do lot don't know what normal means sometimes. It is an incredible vessel, isn't it? There seem to be an awful lot of crew members as well as guests. I think a vessel this size requires a considerable crew, miss. They certainly seem to be very busy, don't they? Get those trunks on board. What does it look like I'm doing? It looks like you're dragging your feet. Faster, man, faster! Alright, alright. We'll be weighing anchor soon. We've got to get everything on board. Poor people. They rushed off their feet. What is it? Isn't that Emiliana over there? Oh yes, so it is. I think she's seen us too, look. Good evening, Inspector. Catrail, Ernest. Oh, I see you brought your pet along with you. Good evening, Emiliana. Have you been invited to the party on McBodyface? Yes, I have. You're not coming, are you? No, we actually are. Oh, well, it was her who invited me too. I was hoping to be able to relax and enjoy the cruise. Not much chance of that happening with you on board. Oh, don't be like that. Let's enjoy it together. Do you think in the world of Layton, where everyone has puzzles like practically falling out of their pockets and stuffed in their their candles that there's maybe like a group of anti-puzzlers who secretly meet to do anything but puzzle solve just nothing to do with puzzles I think there is anti-puzzler group oh miss it looks like we're ready to embark I do apologize for the wait ladies and gentlemen however we are now beginning to board Mind your step as you walk up the gangplank and enjoy the cruise. This is so exciting. Come along. On we go. Oh, wait for us, miss. Don't forget your pet. A world where you need a safe space for puzzles. I like puzzles, but that actually sounds awful. Right? Like, it's not- it's not like- I feel like anyone hates puzzles so much as in 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 the world of Layton, any conversation you have with anyone means a puzzle could just show up. And they might not even finish talking to you if you don't solve their puzzle. You could just be trying to get a good book off the shelf and then there's a puzzle and for some reason you have to do it because it's like a compulsion. much larger inside than I expected. Wonder where our cabins are. I think our cabin numbers are printed on the tickets. Oh, really? Oh, yes, here it is. It looks like I'm in the standard class deluxe. What? I'm in standard class deluxe, though. Oh, yes, so you are. And our cabin number is the same, too. So, cab cabini? Looks like we're sharing for the night? I don't... Hmm. Where do I put my keys? Boom puzzle. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be late on my way to work. Let me just quickly grab my lunch. Oh no, there's a puzzle sitting there. <laughs> Madame Dublé has a lot to answer for. I just seem to be in regular standard class cabin number. Um... Oh, same as me. Looks like we're bunking up together. 
think our cabin is down this way, miss, so we'll meet up later, shall we? Why were you late to work today? I got sidetracked by five puzzles along the way. I'm really sorry. Three of them were incredibly badly worded, and I thought there were smart answers to them, but the answer was zero. For everything. Alright, Ernest, see you later. So, Emiliana, shall we? This is going to be fun. I don't think so, Cheryl. Your cabin is the other way. Huh? You may be a dog, but you still can't share a cabin with us. It's not what a gentlewoman does. It's alright. Yes, going with pinstripes. So, the deluxe accommodation appears to be this way. The map, the the ship map's cool. I like that. This is standard class deluxe. It's quite a large cabin, actually. It's certainly better than I was expecting. Oh, good, and my suitcase is here already. Isn't it a little overstuffed? What have you got in there, Catrail? Um, you know, like three mini games, save states of, of my life, uh, some, some other random stuff that I threw in for fun. Detective's bag is always full. I have many important things to take around with me, even for one night. It's too much for one night, surely. You should manage for a week with a suitcase that full. I don't think so. I already whittled it down to the bare minimum. Anyway, let's not waste any time talking about luggage. We should be out on deck enjoying the cruise. Well, I agree with that. Too much time in here could be trying. Oh, also my wardrobe. Yes, yeah, because that's in there too. <laughs> Shall we go and ask Ernest and Inspector Hastings if they want to join us? That's alright. We'll go and find their cabin in standard class. Uh, I just watched um, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them last night because it showed up on Netflix. And, and... I very much like uh, suitcases that have way more space in them than than they're supposed to. Yeah, like let's see what she's got in her puzzle. She's got her journal, her case files, her puzzle index, uh, save states, uh, the extra case codas. All right, a whole bunch of like and three mini games and a wardrobe, plus all this collection of stuff that she keeps taking off of people's desks. You know, the bare minimum. Hey, Ernest. You and Inspector all settled in? So, this is regular standard class, is it? Oh, hello again, miss. Is is there something wrong with our cabin? You keep peering around. Oh, no, it's just, it seems a little basic compared to ours. Really? Oh, it's more than a few rungs down on the ladder of luxury, I'd say. If our cabin was the Ritz, yours be say... No, don't say it, miss. Please, I'd rather not know. Both in standard class. It can't be that different. This cabin's pretty fancy, if you ask me. I agree. I think it's a splendid cabin. A roof to keep the rain out, walls to keep the wind out, and a door to keep the noise out. What's the problem? Gosh, when you put it like that, I feel rather small for letting a thing like that ruffle my feathers at all. So you should. Who gives a monkey... Who gives the monkeys what the room's like as long as you can sleep in it? Get your priorities right. Okay. Yes, Inspector. Sound advice, Ernest. You really shouldn't let this cramped little cabin get you down. Who was it that brought it up again? Anyway, Emilia and I was wondering if you'd like to join us on deck. Rather, I'm dying to see what it's like up there. What are you waiting for? I do like that this case has started with us just being here and not being called by someone. That's that's kind of nice. I'm just gonna go walk out here on the deck. Welcome aboard. 
cloudless skies above us, we have a perfect night for our cruise. The crew still has some final preparations to make before we depart, so please just enjoy the atmosphere. That must be the ship's captain. Yes, no question. How can you tell, miss? Oh, I just can. Guts again? Hmm, I don't think you're far off there. Oh, do you think so too? His composed demeanor, his uniform, the fact that he's addressed the passengers. Yeah, it's a high probability that he's the captain. Oh, so you're like me. You think he's the captain as well. You simply guessed. I, on the other hand, used my profiling skills to arrive at the truth through logic and reasoning. I'm not like you at all. Oh, who too? He's coming over. Look. Captain Pullman. Welcome aboard the McBody face. I'm the captain of this vessel. Midas Pullman. I hope you enjoy our cruise. The weather forecast is for low winds and no rain, so you should be in a treat for a treat. No money tornadoes coming this way. I knew you were the captain. Yes, we're very much looking forward to this, Captain Pullman. Thank you. I'll say, the ship of yours is a really very swish, isn't it? Oh, Ernest, stop trying to make swish happen. You like her, do you? Yes, yeah, she's small as cruise ships go, but plenty big enough to be comfortable. Doesn't seem small to me at all. Ah, is that so? Well, put alongside some of the grander ships and you'd soon change your mind, sir. Hey, angry optimist. The ship I captained before this one, for example, was a Goliath by comparison. Oh, you've captained larger vestals. Amazing. You can't judge a ship by its size alone, though. It's certainly not a case of the bigger the better. The greatest cruise ships are the ones that give their passengers the smoothest and most enjoyable ride. Oh, that's jolly sound logic. So, I'd just like to go over our itinerary, if I may. After we set off, we'll head downriver towards the sea and out into open waters. Once we're a little way offshore, we'll let the party get into full swing, and then tomorrow we'll head back up the river to land again. Sounds jolly romantic, doesn't it? A dinner party on a cruise ship in the open waters of the sea, gazing back to the shore. Sounds wonderful. Yes, I like food. It's definitely food I'm here for. Well, we should be ready to depart at any moment. I wish you a very enjoyable cruise. That's one thing you can say for late in games. All the characters look very different. They use they reuse a lot of them, but they all look really different. At last, I'm sure this is going to be quite an adventure. I have a feeling something's going to happen. When you say you've got a feeling something's going to happen, that usually means a case. Oh, don't, Inspector. This is supposed to be a break from work for me. Ah, uh, yeah, you and me both. Let's hope we can stay off duty. Yes, let's all just enjoy the cruise. My suitcase is the only case I need. Ha ha ha. Excuse me, Miss Ketrill Leighton, I believe. Well, hello, Mr. Full hold. And Inspector Hastings and Miss Perfetti from Scotland Yard, if I'm not mistaken. Madame Dubly told me that she had sent you invitations for this little cruise. Ah yes, you're one of the Seven Dragons, aren't you? I remember seeing you at the premiere of No Sub for Love. Ah yes indeed, I am Mustafa Fullhold. The owner of this ship. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Perhaps you've heard of my shipbuilding business here in London? Bountiful Holdings? Hmm. Ah, uh, yes, the UK's number one shipbuilding and shipping company. According to Company's House, profit in recent years has derived as much from marine transportation as shipbuilding, and the company's shareholder report indicates new investment in passenger shipping. I believe the objective is to reclaim some of the business lost to the motor and airline industries in recent years. Ah, uh, you're very well informed. Yes, in fact, this affordable luxury cruise ship was one of my own ideas. 
I know that's supposed to be hair. It looks like he's got, like, a water balloon hanging from... Rich people are weird. One cannot tread water in business. One must always seek new horizons. Think of new ideas. In the past, I have taken no prisoners when I was making a name for myself. Many of my rivals wept because of me. But every man is the smith of his own fortune. Dog eat dog world, as they say. No doubt an eminent detective such as yourself understands what I'm talking about. Uh, I try not to eat my dog. Hmm, so people apparently gain eminence through sheer good luck. Well, it is uncommon for Madame Dublay to compliment anyone. She tells me you have an incredible mind. I would like to see that mind in action. <laughs> Puzzle time. Alright. A tall order, huh? When the whistle is blown, the sailors with flags down will raise them, and those with flags up will lower them. You need to get all the sailors to have their flags raised by making exactly five commands. Slide the whistle to display where the command will apply, and place the circle over the sailors you are addressing. You cannot place it in a location containing no sailors. What? Puzzles where you have to take an object in position, it is a certain location. Touch and slide the object to bring it into play. And then slide it to where you would like. It will be placed wherever you release it. Number displayed next to an object shows how many of it are still available. You need to solve the puzzle without exceeding that number. Let's bring... Oh, screen. So I know I can blow the whistle. I have five times I can blow the whistle. And I need everyone to end up with their flags raised at the end. You in the back. Trixie. Hmm. I feel like I need to start over. Blue to noob. Hey, thanks for resubscribing. So many months. Yeah, 11. Almost hit that whole year. Thank you for coming back. Okay, well, we need to get the one in the back. So we do that. Oh no. Hmm. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of whistle noises. Okay. That's not gonna work. Can I grab? Okay, I can get you. Can I nab? I can nab that one. I do that. No, I didn't quite get him. Here we go. And then do this just right. Get all three of you.
The circle's not big enough to get you to. to you too. Hmm. Yeah, there are flag down guys in all four corners. Do that and Those three won't be able to get that one. I think that might be. I need to start. to solve this now any mystery or any puzzle solved i'm glad they have an undo button as opposed to a have to start over every time button yeah it's you sent in the central area first and then then to the edges ah yes i see it's all true these rumors i hear of your extraordinary talent Oh, thank you. If you ever find yourself in a fix, please do come and tell me about it. Ah, fixes do not trouble me, but I will certainly remember your name. I wish you a most enjoyable voyage. Mr. Fullhold, forgive the interruption. The steward informs me they're ready to begin the party. Ah, thank you, Midas. We are in open waters already? Yes, sir. Make boaty faces very speedy. Not perhaps in the same league as the SS Anne. I'm sorry, the SS Midas Touch that you captained before, but I hope you're satisfied. SS Midas Touch is a fine name. Absolutely, Mr. Fullhold. She handles like a dream. So, my friends, it seems the party is underway. Please make your way to the Grand Lounge. Let us celebrate this maiden voyage in style. Oh, that's jolly exciting. Can't wait to see what it's like. Let's go. Where are we going? Nice. Let's go to the lounge with the fancy statue. Oh, what a feast. Ooh. I don't know where to look. Every dish looks absolutely delicious. Though my Nana might not have agreed, there's more to life than food, you know. Yes, but we're on a fancy cruise, and there's fancy cruise food. Just look at the decor. That golden statue over there, isn't it magnificent? Mmm, smell it. Catriel, are you even listening to me? Oh, here we go. I think he's gonna announce the start of the party. Ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed guests, may I thank you personally for joining me on the maiden voyage of this magnificent ship, the McBoatface. 
as you know she is the first of a new line of affordable but luxury cruise ships to be manufactured by Bountiful Holdings. So please, drink, feast, live for this evening like kings and queens. Later we have some entertainment planned for your enjoyment. A game where we shall see on whom the goddess of fortune is smiling tonight. Are we in international waters? Are we gambling? Let the party begin. Bess, what do you want to try first? Let me show my love for you by getting you a plate. Oh, Benji, you're the sweetest, but I don't know where to start. Oh, dear me, what a party. Wait till I tell Maud and Enid about this. I'm gossipy. It's certainly an impressive party. I'm sure all the well-to-do Londoners feel very at home. Well, it's not the kind of bash I'm normally invited to, but I could get used to this. In fact, I might even surprise the better half with it one time. What's the matter with you, Catriel? Why have you gone quiet all of a sudden? Huh? Oh, no reason. I mean, I don't mind if everyone wants to chat just instead of going to get some of that scrumptious food. You know. Ah, uh, typical. Let's go have a look around, shall we? Yes, let's go get some food. And perhaps just glance at something other than food as well? No, get food and we can talk. It is great. Food. I can't touch any of it. This is gonna be like that durian popcorn all over again. Most spiffing spread, isn't it? Never seen any of these dishes before. I'm going to tackle this tier tower of this tier tower of dishes from the bottom up. Okay. Such a marvelous spread makes you want to sample a little of everything, doesn't it? Is this round ball at the top some exotic cuisine as well? Um it doesn't look like food. I think it's just a decoration. Oh really? What a shame. I was looking forward to finding out what it tasted like. I think there's even a special dish laid on for you, Cheryl. You have my attention. Madame Dublis thinks of everything, doesn't she? It's funny she doesn't strike you as someone likely to notice the smaller details. Oh, I've just noticed the jelly beside my nemesis tower there. There's always another distraction, isn't there? It's impossible to know where to start. Ah, uh, you're enjoying yourself, I hope. We have a very special surprise arranged for you later. You'll have to wait and see what it is. Is it a puzzle? Is this a if it's a puzzle, I don't want it. It's not- it's not that I wouldn't accept a puzzle, Mr. Fullhold, it's just I have so many of them, and people keep giving them to me, because it's- it's like that's the only thing- thing they think I know I like. It's just- I have so many. Please return it. I hope you're all enjoying the party. Take your time, we have all night. Is it just because I'm so small that that thing looks so huge? That's yeah, enormous. I wonder how many meters tall it is. Clearly it's modeled on a mythical goddess. Clearly. Anyway, it's very ornate. It must have been a real labor of love to produce. I would think so. As a work of art, it's exquisite. And the fact that it's made of solid gold makes it all the more impressive. I... It's probably not solid, solid gold. I mean, it's not just guilt? Guilt? When it belongs to one of the seven dragons? Ernest, please. I'm sure Mr. Fullhold wouldn't dream of using a gold-plated statue as the centerpiece of his new ship. Why not? Ah, I'm flabbergasted. It's such an enormous statue made of solid gold. It's out of this world. Esteemed guests, beautiful everyone's. As part of our lavish entertainment tonight, I have devised a little game for you to play. Oh, this sounds exciting, doesn't it? But before I explain to you the rules of the game, let me inform you of the sumptuous prize. Tonight is, is the gold statue. The statue? That is correct, Miss Layton. It is the gold statue of the goddess that I will be giving away a bidding slip for. I... I don't have space. I definitely don't have space for that in my office. A bidding slip? I am sure no one will want to pass up the opportunity to bid on this magnificent work of art. Oh! 
And wait, I get to win the right to bid on it? I definitely don't want it. I'm, uh, I don't want this game. During me auctioning off that unbelievable statue, Mr. Fogel will be the talk of the town. Oh, Benji, doesn't it sound exciting? We have to take part. Definitely. I'll do everything I can to win it. Well, everyone certainly seems excited. And you're not? Aren't you gonna give it a shot? I don't think so. I mean, the prize is just a bidding slip. It's not the statue itself, is it? You do realize, Catriel, that a statue of that size made of solid gold is practically priceless. If it were to be put up for auction, people would be falling over themselves to be invited to bid. In other words, a bidding slip alone is going to be worth a very large sum of money. Well, I mean, if you put it that way... Ah, well, I guess I could join in. I don't want to be a party pooper. No, oh, taking part now, are you? Can't keep up. Sounds like fun, whatever the prize might be. I won't pretend I'm not interested, but I would like to know the rules before I agree to take part. I see. You read the terms of service, do you? Well, Perfetti, I think you're in luck. We're gonna get told those rules. Alright, let me tell you the rules of the game. Concealed on this ship are four angel statues. These you must find. It is a treasure hunt. Myself and Captain Pullman will lead you to the approximate locations of each angel. The treasure hunt will take you all around this magnificent new vessel as you search high and low. So to the first of the angel locations, the heart of McBodyface, the engine room. Follow me. Hunting for angels in order to win the goddess. Mr. Fullhold has a wonderful sense of style, doesn't he? I say this promises to be rather fun. A policeman, a private detective, a criminal analyst all competing against each other. Three professionals in the field of treasure hunting. I think it's safe to say one of the three of you will be claiming the bidding slip. Hmm. Hmm. Gosh, you all look rather fierce all of a sudden. Stand aside. Hunting out stat a few statues will be a walk in the park after the sort of cases I usually get tangled up in. Just a minute, Inspector. Private detectives like me are forever hunting out treasure. I mean, really, if I had a pound for every pirate that's washed through my door... You've helped pirates? I'll find the statues in no time. I think you'll find that I outstrip both of you when it comes to locating things. Simple analysis of the criminal, in this case, the hider of the angel statues, will lead me straight to their location. Nice to see the pack pulling together. This little game certainly seems to have aroused some competitive instincts. This is fun. Each of us is sure we're the better treasure hunter. So let's find out who's right. Whoever finds the four angel statues is the winner. I think that's the point, Catriel. Ah, nothing like a detective trope of, I brought together all these detectives to play a game. Have some little gray cells of my own I call on what uh, when I want to, you know. It doesn't have to be a dog-eat-dog -dog disaster. Wouldn't it be better off working together? Cheryl, there are only three possible outcomes in this scenario. The first, someone other than the three of us wins this prize. The second, one of the other two. In other words, Inspector Hastings or Emiliana wins the prize. And the third, I find all four angel statues and walk away with a bidding slip. There are three possibilities to the outcome of this story. Anybody could win except for these three people. The other two people could win except for me, and I could win. That's not... That's... that's... okay, sure. The most likely of those three outcomes is the third, or to put it another way, I'm going to win. Sure. So, the gauntlet has been cast down. To the engine room! Alright. Here we are, heart of the latest vessel, the engine room of McBodyface. Somewhere within the room, the first of the angel statues is hidden. Oh no, there are pipes all over the place. How are we going to find a little statue in here? This is the worst. Don't worry, Bess. If we work together, there's nothing we can't do. Oh, Benji, you're just the be just great. 
Deary, deary me, an angel statue hidden here somewhere? Well, I'll do my best. There's a lot of machinery down here. Beats me what any of it does, mind you. Ships are outside of my area of expertise, too. I should have studied more before coming on the cruise. Oh, this all looks very interesting. Is that a speaking tube at the end there? Pause off unless you're told otherwise. Ah, there's a switch just above it. Wonder what it does. <laughs> ah, that switch is used to operate the crane for loading and unloading large cargo. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have touched it without permission. Oh, no harm done. Now it looks like Mr. Fole is all start, set to start this game. You all ready? Let the game begin. You're free to explore the engine room to your heart's content as long as you do not slow us down. So I invite you to locate the angel statue. Alright. Found a hint coin. It's very hard hunting out a tiny little statue with a mess of machinery and pipework. My instincts are telling me this panel here with all the switches on it's hiding something. Perhaps I'll just flick a few of them with this puzzle. I'd like to I'd like to touch these buttons. Have a puzzle. Treasure hunt. A is the correct answer. What? Uh huh. Okay, cool. It's solved. Interesting. I can... I can circle three. And I can push buttons. A is the correct answer. What? I don't really know what A has to do with it, but I think that would be correct. That's one, there's two, that's one, there's two. I've seen how to solve this now. Puzzles are made for solving. K. 
Okay. Like an explanation? You did it. You found all the jewels. Time to set off the next treasure hunt. What did the... Why write A is the correct answer? I don't know. Okay, whatever. Ah, I found something. A misdirect, a pun in Japanese. Maybe? I, I'm not really sure. It's the angel statue. What a devious hiding space. Oh, you found it. Well... You know, for a detective like me, it's really just a matter of going through the motions, and... You want to go through them a bit faster? This was a piece of cake, wasn't it? Obviously, I also located the statue. Hardly worth you know, profiling at all, that was. Now it seems some of the other guests managed to find the statue as well. Clearly, if everyone managed to find it, the hiding place was too easy. Good, I see you've all managed to locate the first of the angel statues. Don't let a little... Com Complacency take hold of you. That was a gentle introduction. As you say, all here in the engine room, perhaps you will indulge us and allow Captain Pullman to tell you a little bit about this magnificent new vessel. Oh, my instincts are telling me that this is going to be long and boring. Well, as I'm sure you all agree, the McBody face is a fine looking vessel, but as I'm about to explain, her guts are equally impressive. The engine here has enough horses to give a container ship a run for its money. Actually, she's even more powerful than your average cargo carrier. She's just ticking along at a comfortable pace at the moment to give you good people a smooth ride, but I, if I were to open her up, she'd really fly. There's not another ship on the Thames that can match her capabilities. You think she's nearly done? My eyelids are starting to droop. It's a rather spiffing ship. I'm not surprised he wants to sing its praises. Ah, oh, thank you for the detailed explanation. We're in a new age of shipping now. These modern vessels are a world apart. The Kabodi face heralds a new dawn. The first of the many new passenger craft I plan to commission. Forgive me, you're all eager to continue the games. Let's go to the lounge. Ah, here we go. Now it's time for the actual story to begin. Oh, Benji, that was so hard. The angel was hidden really well, wasn't it? Oh, was something different? It feels bigger in here. I think you're right. Oh, you're always right, Bess. Well, this angel statue hunt is very naughty, isn't it? But a bidding slip for that statue. What a pra prize to tell everyone about. Oh no, the statue is missing. Where is the golden goddess, though? The golden goddess is gone. Where is the statue? Someone has stolen it. When the perpetrator of this terrible act is found, he will wish he never crossed Mustafa. Full hold. Kasploosh. Hold your horses now. It's been nicked, the whopping great thing. Oh dear, Mr. Fullhold is fuming. Of course he is, that statue is practically priceless. Wait a minute though, if the statue's been stolen, what will become of my bidding slip? You haven't won it yet, Kate Triel. Well, all I can say is something's got a blooming nerve carrying out a theft right under my nose like this. Cat Perfetti, it's up to us to find out whoever did this. Well, we certainly can't ignore it be the theft of the century, given how valuable the statue must be. So now we're searching for the golden goddess statue instead of angels. Oh, what fun! I had the crew search the ship, Mr. Fullhold. There's no sign of the statue anywhere. Oh, this is madness. The statue is enormous. Where would someone possibly have hidden it? It's a terrible crime. I'll go straight to the bridge and radio back to shore to let them know what's happened. Thank you, Midas. But there's nothing to be done from the shore. I do not understand this. 
Don't you worry, Mr. Fullhold. We'll catch the crook that did this, you mark my words. Ah, yes, of course, I was forgetting about the profession of some of my guests. Then you find my statue, and find the person responsible for this brazen criminal act. Whatever it takes. Use persuasion if you need to. I mean, have, I mean, use the occasion of being on this vessel to uh, find the criminal. We will, Mr. Fold. Any mystery solved. That's my motto. Hey, Adam. Thanks for that raid. Look at all them cool people. All them trogs. How you doing? I was talking about you earlier today. Saying how a wonderful human being you are. Because you are. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming over with the raid. Uh, if you're... if for some, As I said, we were talking about Adam earlier today. And if you haven't heard of him, you should go check out his stuff. He's over at twitch.tv slash cbats. Uh, he also does this really cool series called Spectator Mode over on the Loading Ready Run YouTube channel. You should check that out too. And if you're new here, my name's Heather. I'm a variety streamer. I'm on day 350? Sure, why not? 350 of 365 of a stream streak right now. And we're, uh, we're solving mysteries. You don't mind. Could you please ensure no other guests enter the lounge area from now on? We don't want the crime scene disturbed. Of course, it will help your investigation. I will inform our guests. They must not enter. This is an unprecedented disaster for my new vessel's maiden voyage. A giant statue has gone missing. Golly, what a turn up for the books. The theft of a solid gold statue. What I want to know is how did anyone manage to make off with something so big and heavy without being seen? So my guess is they either threw it in the ocean, which mm, seems unlikely. Maybe it's hidden under the stage. Or... Uh, it got covered in frosting. Sure, it's made of wafers. It's almost unbelievable what it happened, and we have to find out how. Alright, let's get this investigation underway, shall we? I think we should begin by taking a formal statement from Mr. Fullhold. Oh, hey, this thing is gone, too. There was a decoration up here. It melted. It's made of solid gold. You shouldn't do that. It probably melted. Oh, the swine that did this taking my statue. Mr. Fold, could we have a word, please? Naturally, if it would help track down this scoundrel. When we went to the engine room to start the angel statue treasure hunt, were any other guests left behind in the lounge? No, I believe everyone was taking part in the game. We went together to the engine room. There should have been no one remaining in the lounge. Hmm. I'd say we were in the engine room for about 15 minutes, wouldn't you? Was the statue light enough to be removed in such a short space of time? Miss Layton, the goddess statue is made of solid gold. It weighs approximately four tons. Four tons? How on earth did you ever manage to get it inside the lounge in the first place? The McBody face is equipped with a very sophisticated crane, Miss Perfetti. That was a simple task. Then it seems probable the culprit used the same method to remove the statue, doesn't it? Can anyone operate the crane? No, I don't think so. It's not so easy to control. I do know the details. You must- Oh, right. I don't know the details. You should ask the captain. I see. Well, we'll need to ask him about it now, I think. Yes, we should find him on the bridge. That's where he said he was going. To radio ashore. Yes, that's right. Well, to the bridge, then. No need to look around here for clues or anything like that. Let's just go. Let's go to the bridge. Solve our mysteries that way. Oh, it's rather, rather wonderful being on the bridge and seeing where the captain controls this magnificent ship. There's the captain. I'm very sorry to disturb you like this. 
We have questions, Captain. Do you manage to radio ashore, Captain Pullman? Yes, I've just finished relaying the message. Set a course back to the wharf. Obviously, the party can't go on now. Anything I can do to help? Please don't ask. I've told the crew to assist you as well. Alright, cool. So, we'd actually like to ask you about the crane. Ah, the one next to the lounge. Mr. Fullhold informs us that only a trained operator could use it. Hmm, exactly. For starters, they need the key from me. There's no spare either. I have the only one. Captain has full responsibility for the vessel, you see. Even the owner couldn't operate the crane without my consent. I see. Everything has to go through you. Ah, uh, yes, and Mr. Fullhold is well aware of that. He appointed, he appointed me captain. He entrusted the McBody face entirely to me. In other words, Mr. Fullhold obviously has a great deal of faith in you. He's got salt water in his blood, that man. Oh, that's not good. You should not. That's probably bad for a human being. Maybe he's Aquaman. How he's a hard-nosed mis man, and not everyone likes the man, but that's just one side of him. What do you mean by that? What I mean is, he has a good heart. When my old company went under, not only did he take me on, but he took on all my crew. Oh, that's nice of him. We've all still got jobs. Jobs we like. Oh, well, that's cool too. It was incredibly good of him to rescue all from unemployment. Well, that's the seven dragons for you. They can do anything. There's seven dragons. Yes, like I said, he's a great man. I'm always be indebted to him. I see. Okay, well, thanks for your time. Uh, of course it's shaped like the angel statue. Well, we got the top half of a wing. I guess we can barbecue that. The Sven Dragons. <laughs> Question the crew. Well, there's only one crew, man. Could we ask you some things? Sure. Uh, I'm Abel, by the way. Abel Simon. Uh huh. During the time when the theft took place, Captain Pullman was with the guests in the engine room. Who was driving the ship? Oh, that'd be me. Although it's really just a case of checking that she's staying on course. So, that would place you on the bridge when the theft occurred? Uh, yes. Yes, it would. Who operated the crane when the statue was loaded? Ah, uh, well, that was also me. Oh, so you know how to operate it, do you? Can the crane be used at any time? No. Most of the time it's not switched on, to conserve power. <laughs> Before you operate it, you have to flick the master switch in the engine room. If that switch is off, the crane won't do anything. Hmm, master switch in the engine room, eh? Well, it looks like there's quite a procedure to get the crane up and running, then. There is. No one would have made use of it without planning it first. What's up, Profetti? You onto something? I am thinking about motive. Motive? I thought you were the brains around here. Why does anyone steal gold, eh? For money! Well, usually I'd agree, but let's not forget that the statue was a matter of pride for Mr. Fullhold. What's your point? The point is perhaps the motive wasn't money, but malice. Revenge? Maybe? Mr. Fullhold has made a number of enemies, you know, being a dragon and all. Is it impossible that the culprit stole the statue as a way of getting back at him for something? Hmm, you do have a point. What do you think? Talk to Fullhold again? First, there's something else we need to examine. What's that? I don't know. The crime scene? The switch in the engine room. Sure, that. The crane can't be operated unless the switch is on, remember? And when we were in the engine room before, looking for the angel, the switch was off. Mm, can't say I remember. It was off, yes. I remember because Kestriel tried to touch it before the captain told her... Off, that is. Oh yes, of course, now I remember. I think we should go back to the engine room and have another look at that switch. Alright then, let's go. Engine room. Walking down. I like the ship map. It's cool. Hello. What are you lot doing down here then? Sorry to disturb you, but we're investigating this stolen statue and stuff. 
You're a ship engineer, huh? That's right. Declan Swavers, the name. Don't let me stop you. Go ahead and investigate. Oh, he's gone back to his work. Well, he said we could investigate, so let's do it. This is the switch that turns on the power to the crane. According to Mr. Simon, if this is off, the crane can't be used. Well, we're in the engine room, looking for Angel Fight Green at the time. Uh, the goddess statue was taken, and the switch is definitely off then. Just as it's still off now. If the crane was used, the switch must have been flipped. But by who? Well, we know it's somebody on board, at least. Clue! Somebody on board did it! We're good at this. We'll just arrest everyone. Simpler that way. Hey, quick question, Mr. Swaver. How many people on this ship know how to use the crane? Uh, the navigation officer. Of course, the captain was a Navy once, so he probably knows. Most of the time, it's old Abel that does it. I'm him being the Navi now and all. I see. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's gotta be someone on the bridge who does it. That's where the controls are. And Abel's got the kind of finicky mind any has. You've gotta have your head screwed on to move them girt heavy things around. Well, thank you, Mr. Slaver. You've been very helpful. So far, we've learned... That's it. Oh, you've worked something out, have you? I have! I'll fill you in, but first, let's find somewhere we won't be overheard. Let's go to the deck. Okay, let's do that. On to the deck. Oops. I forgot to get out of this mode. Go to the map mode. To the deck where no one can hear us except for the mermaids. Maybe, if they're there. We'll ask them if they can leave. Inspector, what is it? I figured it out. I've pegged the culprit. Really? Even though Catriel and I haven't made our deductions yet? Alright, enough of your cheek. I do crack cases from time to time, you know. Uh, so what I've deduced? The guilty party must be... Yes. Ship's navigator. The man we spoke to on the bridge? Yes. Simon was on the bridge when the crane controls are... When the statue was taken. To put it another way, there's no one else who could have used the crane at the time in question, so he has to be our man. Well, he did admit to being on the bridge at the right time. And it's true that the crane does need to be operated from the bridge, which is why it had to be him. Unfortunately, there's more to operating the crane, though, isn't there? Eh? First of all, Captain Pullman told us that you need a key, which only he has. And second of all, the power switch in the engine room has to be in the on position. And the bridge is in the topmost level of the ship, whilst the engine room is right down the bottom. It takes a fair amount of time to get between them. Running the engine room, back to split, blah blah blah, 15 minutes, the crane for doing anything. But, but the great statue, how did it move? Well that's the point, isn't it? You have to be on the bridge to operate the crane. You can't get to the engine room and back again in the time window we're looking at. And that's where the power switch is. To say nothing of the key that's required. Well, it was nicked somehow. Yes, I'm beginning to think there's something a little different about this case. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know, we should check the crime scene, maybe? If we're gonna solve this, it's a case of all hands on deck. Ooh, animation. So what? There's some elaborate plot going on here behind the scenes? Is that what you're saying, Kat? Yes. It's evident that the criminal is both extremely intelligent and a level-headed decision. <sighs> Statue it melted. Possibly be him. You're right. Level-headed, intelligent, an expert, in fact, on everything about this ship. Well, if Simon didn't do it, then who did? 
brought us all the way out here on deck to tell us that you made an Ill illogical deduction. Watch it, I don't see you coming up with anything better. I, I just haven't built a full profile of the culprit yet. Now, now, you two, no squabbling. I have a cutting plan. Oh? I'm not sure I want to hear it, do I? Oh, yes, you do. We redo the angel figurine treasure hunt. What's cunning about that? What are you hoping to achieve? Catriel, this is hardly the time for more games. Just hear me out. There's a very good reason for me suggesting it. Remember when the theft happened? We were already underway on the cruise. Which means, at this very moment, the culprit is still on board. You can't be sure of that. What if the blagger did just that did did it jump ship and got onto another vessel or something? I think we'd know. Nah, I'm confident that didn't happen. Immediately after we discovered the statue was missing, we we looked around for other ships. I didn't see anything nearby. No missing lifeboats. I see, alright. Let's assume the culprit is still on board. It's very likely. I don't imagine the culprit expected a police officer and a private detective would be on board. If whoever did this sees that we're already investigating, they might try to destroy some valuable evidence. But if we're seen to be playing the treasure hunt game again, what message does that convey? That we're certainly not investigating very thoroughly? Exactly. We're dealing with a particularly cool and collected criminal here. We need to get whoever it is to lower their guard if we're going to catch them out. Right. So, we're going to go ask him to play the game again? Yeah, let's do that. What you said does make sense, but... You sure this isn't just your way of trying to get your hands on that bidding slip? Of course not. I mean, if I happen to win the bidding slip, I'm not saying it wouldn't be nice, but, you know. Oh, you admit it. I knew that was the real reason. Ah, uh, hello, my friends. How is it going? Have you identified them yet? Oh, hey, we wanted to talk to you. You think we could start that treasure hunt again? What? But the goddess statue is gone. Without that, the game is meaningless. Oh, don't worry. It's a cunning plan, you see. It's all part of a ruse. Oh, a cunning plan, you say? That's right. We'll locate the statue, so you just get the game started. Well, you know, might know I am a fan of cunning plans. The more cunning, the better. I see you have a sense of adventure, as do I. Very well, I will summon the guests and we will play the game again. Anyway, it would be a shame to waste the entertainment I prepared for you all. Oh, thank you. So, no time to waste. Come with me. Uh, let's see. My cabin. As the owner of this vessel, I have the pleasure of staying in the deluxe first class accommodation. Gosh, deluxe and first class. Sounds wizard. My intention for this angel figurine treasure hunt was to showcase my latest creation to my guests. First class accommodation is a sight I wish you all to behold. Alright then. Here it is, the most exclusive of the cabins that McBodyface has to offer. It's gigantic, and the view it makes where we're sleeping look like a kennel. It's so spacious and so well appointed. It's a unique appeal to the McBodyface, the height of luxury, but without a prohibitive price tag. Now somewhere concealed in this cabin, another angel figurine. Cool, I'm gonna track it down, but before I do... Inspector Hastings, Amelia, quick word. What's up? I thought this was the plan. It is, but we're looking for the angel, so let's also snoop around in here. You what? Shh, not so loud. We don't want Mr. Fullhold over here. Alright, I catch your drift. What was the idea, was it? Pretend we're playing the game while we're hunting for clues? It's a good way to avoid arousing suspicion. Exactly. This treasure hunt game is the perfect cover for us. And if I find the angels, I'll also get that bidding slip. Care more about that than the case. Well, let's start scouring the cabin then. I mean, we have to solve the case of where the statue went if I want to, if that bidding slip's going to have any value, so... Alright, uh, the ship itself seems like a good place to look. Top notch, this model's right down the last detail. Wait, what's this? You found something? A puzzle! 
Well, please do be careful of the model. It looks very delicate. A puzzle. How ex unexpected. Island mystery. There is a mysterious carving on a stone monument that sinks into the sea at high tide. It apparently shows the time when the water... Shows the time when the island sinks under the water. What time is it showing? Series carving a stone monument that sinks into the sea at high tide. Apparently shows the time when the island sinks under the water. I mean, when the island itself is sunk, it'd just be up to there, wouldn't it? Or are you saying it would be here? It shows the time when the island sinks under the water. What time is it showing? Those little grey cells engaged? <laughs> See, I'll get them right sometimes. Aw, he's so happy and proud of himself. Yep, this is a reflection of the water. That's a terribly awful clock. Just saying. Not bad, Inspector Hastings. Perhaps they were right to make you Inspector after all. I'm gonna take that as a compliment, because otherwise I have to fire you. I wasn't complimenting you. I w no, you know what? I like my job. Gonna keep it. Maybe a nap. Funny place for a map. This really? It's a nautical chart. Don't be picky. It's, it is a map of the sea. It's strange that it's here, though. I'd have expected a cabin like this to have paintings and portraits, not charts. I'm afraid that is my doing. I love the sea, and all things related to it. It's the reason I established my shipping company. I see. Yes, I do understand. The sea is so romantic. Romantic, alluring, mysterious, powerful. Yes, I enjoy my business adventures, but the sea is my true love. It is my dream to make Bountiful Holdings the largest shipping company in the world. If I succeed, I have another dream, a bigger one. I will live out the rest of my days as a hunter of treasure, risking life and limb on the high seas. Oh, that sounds rather spiffing. Yes, there is countless treasure concealed under the waves, sleeping on the seabed, waiting to be found. Cle clearly a very passionate man, Mr. Fulhold. I'm sure you're right. There must be a lot of undiscovered treasure. Oh, hey, look, this map moves. Time for a puzzle. A fathom of the depths. You've come by a treasure map, which shows various islands with different ruins on them. The treasure is located in the middle of an equilateral triangle that is connecting three islands that each contain different shaped ruins. Touch the three islands that show where the treasure is located to give your answer. Touch again to cancel the distance. Okay. Um. Equilateral triangle. Uh, 
Okay, that's just what this triangle is. Connecting three islands that each contain different shaped ruins. Touch the three islands that show where the treasure is located. Or do I still have to make an equilateral triangle? I need to get... one of each of these. I feel like I'm supposed to still make an equilateral triangle happen. different kind of ruin. So I need to have this one or this one involved. Definitely. I said it was this one. Can I get two others? I can get this one, but I can't connect to other ones. I'm making the assumption that I need to do it through an equilateral triangle, but that might be wrong. They each contain different shaped runes. Treasure is located in the middle of an equilateral triangle, which is already this. Connecting three islands that each contain. So I think they just need to connect. I don't think it needs to be collateral. But I think they all need to connect. Which... something that dumb? Of course it would be something that dumb. It's a laden puzzle. Is it something that's dumb? Mm, this should do it, I think. No? Okay, cool. What's the matter with me today? It's the shape joining the triangle. 
Throwing the islands an equal. Okay, I do have to make it an equilateral triangle. <sighs> okay. Treasures located in the middle. With blood trials. This connecting three islands. Oh, it's connecting three islands. The ones I'm touching don't necessarily have to. It just has to go through, doesn't it? Mm. have to touch Tris is located in the middle of an ecological triangle. It's connecting three islands that each contain me touch one of those and I can't touch okay that's not an equilateral triangle neither is that that is not no, no, those are not. Mm, there. I've seen how to solve this now. Yep. Puzzles are made for solving. Because your brain makes the assumption that they have to follow along the lines to make the triangle. Center of the triangle is the middle, the ocean. Mm. Mm. Jin Hyun ham soup. Oh, well done, miss. You found it. the angel figurine. Yes, my congratulations. Brilliant. Allow me to take you to the next treasure hunt. The bridge. The bridge again. Weren't we just there? I had no idea there was an angel figurine hidden here, though. Well, back to the bridge. Alright, we found a clue. I, I'm not really sure that's a real clue, but sure. do for you. Resumed the treasure hunt game. Midas? Oh, I see. Well, I suppose the guests do need a way to pass time until we're at the wharf again. 
It's going to take a quite, quite a big, bit of time for us to get back there, even though it took us no time to get out. I'll keep her steady. Can't wait. So, this is the nerve center of the ship from where the captain steers her through the water. Third angel figurine is concealed somewhere inside this room. It's bound to be some likely places. Alright, um, let's try the wheel. Got told no. This set of tubes. There's machinery and instruments all over the place, but just here is especially chock a block. I smell a rat. Your nose really doesn't work, does it, Cheryl? We're looking for an angel, not a rat, but I think this could be the place. These are more speaking tubes, aren't they? They should be empty to allow the sound of your voice to travel along them. Control the knight and the princess at the same time so they both reach the exit. Touch the control arrows to move them both, one square in that direction. If there is a wall or obstacle in that direction, the affected character will not move. If even one of them falls into a hole, it's game over. Alright. Um, okay, well, I can't. If I move you up, you'll fall into the hole, so... If we move you... Over to and down, trying to get you around, so we should probably go down first. They have to get to the exit at the same time. Yeah. So this isn't quite going to work. off a bit. I don't suppose. Mm, this should do it, I think. Okay, sure. Any mystery or any puzzle solved. Did it. Made it to the exit at the same time. It's great. They're both safe and sound. There's, of course, another way to solve this in, like, 12 steps if you want to do that. No thanks. Yeah, I didn't expect that to work either. I thought the game would be like, you can't, she'd move forward and he'd... But I... Yeah. Wonderful show, miss. It's nothing really, it was all about coordinating your movements. 
I'm sure. It was about not falling into holes. Decor docket? Oh, those are, um, every five puzzles you solve, you get a ticket that lets you exchange it for, um, items to decorate the office with. Except, at least that's what they tell you, but what you're really doing is just changing, like, colors of some of the furniture. It's not that interesting. Forlorn Hope 22 hey, thanks for resubscribing. 15 months in a row. Welcome back. And there's an angel inside this tube. Alright, that's angel number three. I believe there's four altogether. I don't know if a lot of these speaking tubes aren't there. It's the bridge. They go to all the areas of those trumpet things. They look like muzzle traps to me. They're called speaking tubes. They're for carrying your voice to other parts of the ship. I wonder where these ones end up. Let's ask Captain Pullman. Hey Captain, tell us about the tubes. They go all over the ship. I need to be able to give orders to crew members wherever they are. This goes to my cabin, this one to the deck, this is the engine room, the hold, eh, pretty much everywhere. Oh, how wonderfully convenient. So you need never leave the bridge. Something like that. Speaking tubes have a long history on ships. Another, another wonderful performance, Miss Layden. You were magnificent discovering the third one. Uh, one more to find. Ground Lounge? Correct. You and the other guests were about to begin the hunt for the angel when we mis discovered that statue. Alright, back to the lounge. We found this angel thing. This clue is speaking tubes. Black lines coming out of the captain's tiny eyes. Oh, I wasn't looking. I need to see his face. I. Mm, I don't think those are eyebrows. I'm not actually sure. That's strange. Something's different here. When we came down this corridor before, I'm sure... Yes, the din from the engine is rather more noticeable than it was before, wouldn't you say? Sorry, I was just being a wag, but now you mention it, I think you're right. It's just because your ears need cleaning out, Cheryl. When did you last have a bath? Last time you gave me one. Talking to your mud again? Actually, Ernest was just commenting that the engine noise seems greater than it was before. Hmm, since when? Well, it seemed much quieter in the Grand Lounge when the party started. I suppose I first noticed it not long after we started looking for the goddess statue. Probably because we're headed back at full throttle? Captain Pullman told us the ship's engine had more to give. Mm, we don't appear to be moving much faster than before. That's true, actually. It certainly does seem a lot faster when you look out the window. I wonder what's causing extra noise, then. Oh, perhaps a melted-down statue of some sort. Oh, who knows. Anyway, back to the lounge. Yeah, let's go find that final thing. Ah, forcing in a clue that way. Somebody stuck the angel up the... Someone stuck the goddess statue in the ta tailpipe of the ship. I don't think that's... Sure. That works, right? Here we are then. Ground hall. The sight of the slant without the golden goddess saddens my heart. When we left from the wharf, it was such a magnificent sight to behold. You don't think that's how ships work? No, yeah, probably not. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, if... Yes. I suppose if the angel is attached to something somehow and it's pulling, weighing it down. Yeah, there, there could be that. Of 
quite sure we'll find your statue, don't worry. Not if we don't actually look for it, Inspector. Yes, well, where do we look then? Please don't feel disheartened, there's still hope. Yes, and now we've come this far, we must complete the exciting angel treasure hunt. That's the spirit. So if you can find the final angel somewhere in this lounge, I will reward you with a bidding slip. Not that it's much of a prize at the moment. Oh dear, that made him feel glum again. Let's just figure this out. Alright, we need to find the angel figurine. Like, the fact that the decoration here is missing is kind of a... Uh... it in the food? No. I have to search this tiered tower of platters in a minute. Let's start with this delicious looking chicken. You do realize how many cal- too many calories dulls your brain, don't you? Oh, shut up. Oh, look, there's a puzzle here on this dish. Let's solve it. Why, it's not even chicken at all. It's a, a stone idol. There's a stone with some symbols carved into it that seem to have some kind of significance. Top part of it is missing and needs to be put back. Pieces of the stone are all in a jumble, and it's not clear which one it is. Look at the symbols on the other sides of the stone to figure out the missing one. to be C, just because I think it would be funny for the symbol to be up. But I'm not sure that's actually it. Eh, heck, why not? This is an interesting one. Yeah, okay. What's the matter with me today? shape of the missing piece is not important. It's the meaning of the symbols that you need to focus on. The meaning? Right, left, straight on. Up. Mm, this should do it, I think. Puzzles are made for solving. Because it's an eyeball, it's looking side to side. Represent an eye looking in different directions. So it's not like I was wrong in my idea of an up arrow, it's just it's not, it's not an eyeball. Oh, you got it right, you continually surprise me. That's strange. I'm not seeing the angel figurine anywhere. We found the other three angels as soon as we solved the puzzles. Just because you see the moon in the sky every night, my friend, does not mean you will see it in this night. No, this puzzle you've just solved is only a hint about the location of the angel that is concealed. Oh, it's a hint, is it? Now the answer to the puzzle was that you had to look up, wasn't it? Ah, so if we look up, is it on the ceiling? Not quite that far up, I think. I suspect it means the top of the tower. Of course, that's a hint. You mean where the decoration was? That's disappointing. There doesn't appear to be any angel on top of the tower of dishes. But it must be there. Actually, I remember there being a little round decoration. It seems to be missing now, too. Ah, yes, I do remember that. Wait, the decoration is gone? No, 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 this is a disaster. Gosh, what was so important about the decoration? 
Yes, well, no, but you see I concealed the final angel figurine inside the decoration of which you speak. Oh no, so you mean the angel figurine is lost too? Yes, now not only is my precious golden goddess missing, but the final angel as well. What are you gonna do, Miss Layden? Things seem to be going from bad to worse. Let's keep calm, Ernest. The angel hasn't gone missing, it's just changed location is all. I did not tell anyone to move it. Someone has gone against my wishes! Let me explain, Mr. Fullhold. The final figurine was originally inside the decoration on the top tier of the tower of the place. Originally. The question we face is, where is it now? In fact, it it's within sight of all of you, even as we speak. Really? Where is it? Do tell us. Let me put you all out of your mystery. The final angel is... In the jelly! In the, in the jelly? Surely not. Oh, it is! If we examine the jelly, we will absolutely find the figurine. Yep, it's definitely in there. Have you found it? Oh, yes, the round decoration, the angel figurine is inside. How did it end up there? Somebody moved it without my permission. Actually, no. The truth is, I think the decoration just fell from the top of the tower into the jelly. Oh no, the statue fell over. <laughs> it literally went to the ocean. Uh, fell. Why would, why would that happen? Oh, because your boat is not level. Sure. In fact, the stern appears to be more considerably lower than the bow. Almost as if it were caught on something. The ship is not level. You sure? I can't say that I've noticed. It's not immediately obvious, especially when you've been walking around the ship. But I'm quite sure the round decoration did in fact roll off the top tower. But the big body face is the very latest model. Everything is in perfect working order. We're not cruising at an excessive speed. What reason would it be? Oh, it's a simple explanation. Don't worry. Now that I've found all four figurines, though, I think it's time to solve this mystery. Fallen Angel. Literally. say it's a very clever hiding place. No one ever think to look for the goddess statue there. Wait, are you saying you know who did it? Of course, the mystery is history. I know who did it and I know how they did it. Well come on then, spill the beans. Who was it and where the devil is the statue? I'll explain everything. Get everyone. Wait a minute, there's something I need to discuss first. What are you planning now? You'll know soon enough. Still sad it wasn't us. For whom the goddess smiles? Well, she would love each and every one of us equally, of course. Of if course. There is someone among us who would have her all for himself. And that someone is. No, wait. I think everyone's more interested in where the goddess is rather than who is responsible for her disappearance. So. Yeah, wait, wait, wait to do the lead up and then. Ah, pop, 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 pop. Hold it. Everyone knows it's bad guy first, then how he did it. We have procedures here, cat. Yes. I should bow to my audience's wishes and explain the whereabouts of the statue first. Hello. Dog giving advice here. Yeah, we've been ignoring you a lot, Cheryl. So, where is the statue, you ask? It's in the ocean. The truth is. It was stolen by someone, but I have deduced where that someone has hidden it. Stolen? How could that be? 
Yeah, we're talking about a four-ton statue here. How could anyone make off with that? Even if it was possible to move it, there's no way to get it off the boat. So... The statue was most important to... Uh... Uh, Fullhold, I believe? It being like a treasure in the sea but and all that? There is. There's one way you could get the statue off this boat and onto dry land. How exactly? I'll tell you. Even as we speak, the goddess of the Thames is under the water. Thames. Ooh, I've been pronouncing it wrong. What do you want? I about? think it's taking a bath. I'm talking about the only possible way such a statue could be moved from this boat to the shore. The statue is under the water, being dragged along by the boat as we speak. And the thief is planning to recover the statue once the party is over and we've docked at the wharf. But who would do such a thing? There's only one person who could have done this. And that is you. Captain Midas Pullman. Honestly, the name's kind of a dead giveaway. And all of the crew have been helping you. Oh. I. All of the crew. You've taken a hallowed image, found it, and mercilessly thrust it into the, let's face it, grim waters of the Thames estuary. It's nothing short of sacrilege. You are all guilty of anchor abuse. <laughs> all right. Anchor abuse? On the Thames Unthinkable. That's not a thing, Cat. Read it back in now. <laughs> well, how do you explain how Captain Pullman removed the statue from the lounge and into the sea? I've already established that there were a number of conditions that would have had to be met in order to use the crane for that purpose. Yes, he needed the help of the crew to make it happen. What are you saying? I'm saying he used... The captain told us there's a key required. Obviously, he had that. He already given the key to the ship's navigator. The incident took place. Simon told us he was on the bridge. That's right. And from the bridge, he asked ship's engineer Declan Swaver to turn on the power to the crane. Hold on a minute. We were in the engine room doing the treasure hunt at the time. I never heard anyone using the speaking tube. No, you didn't, because you weren't supposed to. Huh? Just think back. When we first entered the engine room, Captain Pullman gave a long and detailed account of the ship's engine, didn't he? As he was very passionate about the latest technology. So that was a deliberate distraction? Yes. And while we were busy listening to him, he gave the instruction to Mr. Swaller to flick the power switch. If it hadn't happened that way, there wouldn't have been enough time for Mr. Simon to do the deed. As soon as the cane's power was switched on, he hoisted the statue out of the lounge and over the side of the ship. Once he'd finished, he let Mr. Swaver know, using the speaking tube again. Mr. Swaver returned the power positioned off. Of course, it wasn't just those three involved. Every member of the crew helped. So, they're all guilty then. It was an impressive piece of teamwork, I'll give them that. Yes, facilitated by the many speaking tubes running all over the ship so everyone involved could relay important messages to each other. The covers on the speaking tube between the engine room and the bridge are usually left open, so they are in constant communication. I wasn't really expecting the whole the whole crew to be involved in this. Either. That's that's new. <laughs> the entire crew of three. <laughs> uh this crew's been together for a long time. They know each other inside out. Explains why my profiling hadn't produced results. Nobody could have predicted the entire crew was involved. Just wish they hadn't put their amazing teamwork skills to such nefarious use. What a waste. It's criminal. Well, anyway, we should be arriving at the wharf before too long. I guess we'll arrest the entire crew. <laughs> That's embarrassing. It's a lot of police officers for three crew members. <laughs> It's all over. The case is closed. The ship's captain tried to steal the statue, and the old crew were in on it. Are we actually gonna arrest someone? It. It's under the vessel, boys. Fetch it out. Sir! Under the vessel! 
<laughs> I think this is the first time we've seen justice meted out. You greedy, good for nothing, Spalpeen. You're not fit to call yourself a man of the sea. Quick, I. I'm not so sure. I believe it was the captain's undying love of the sea that drove him to such lengths. Love. Mr. Pullman is aboard this brand new ship today because he is employed as its captain. But once upon a time, he himself owned one of the most famous luxury vessels around, the SS Midas Touch. Isn't that right? How did you... Sadly, your business met with hard times in the economic recession, and you were forced to sell your ship and lay off all of her crew. You put all your younger years into that ship, and now you want her back, don't you? Yes, yes, you're right. You've certainly done your homework, I'll give you that. Unbelievable. I met my late wife aboard that ship. Aww. She means everything to me. I poured my soul into her. This crew who are conspiring with you, they're the crew from your old ship, correct? Yes, and I knew doing a terrible thing like this would mean I wasn't worthy of her. But I just had to get her back. By fair means or foul. Midas, you realize that I have acquired the Midas Touch through one of my brokers. What? Really? You own her, Mr. Fullhold? I'm... I'm a millionaire dragon. I own all the boats. I do. But I don't understand. I didn't think you were interested in older vessels. No. Those crusty old ships make no money. But the Midas Touch is different. She is in a class of her own. If you want a pinnacle of luxury, there is no greater boat on the water. I have decided to run two cruise services from now on. These more affordable ones, and a Pullman service. Really? I... I don't know what to say. I guess we're not arresting anyone today, boys. Once you have made amends for this little uh, ah, transgression, okay. After you're out of I jail. was thinking of making you captain of the Midas Touch. She will be fully refurbished, of course. What do you say? Do you mean that? Yes. No one knows how to get the best from her, like you. There's nothing I'd rather do. Well, Captain Pullman, that's all worked out rather swimmingly, hasn't it? Thanks to you, Miss Layton. The business plan you produced for the Midas Touch was very impressive. It's my motto. All mysteries solved. Put no one in jail. You old dog cat. You arranged all this. Brilliant, Miss Layton. You solved the mystery and put everything right at the same time. Oh, well, it's what I do. <laughs> the golden goddess was raised from the riverbed, muddied but unharmed. And once again, her radiant beauty was put on display for everyone to admire. She smiles on us all. I guess I didn't get that bidding ticket after all. Case has been added. We're not gonna do case nine. We're gonna end the stream. I want to see what, what. The Battle of Hastings. Despite Godwin's day bank holiday, Inspector Hastings is in a flap. It's his wife's birthday. Oh no! Wow. How much more cartoon can you get than a filler episode about a character's birthday? <laughs> or rather, a char an associated character character to another character's birthday. Alright, we're gonna call the stream here. Um, we'll be finished, uh, it's Thursday, right, it's Thursday. So tomorrow's stream will be at 9pm, 
we'll do we'll do the 9 to 11 and then we'll do the midnight Saturday stream as well which means we're going back to Paper Mario tomorrow night and then Saturday we'll be doing scribble knots and which means I believe we come back to this game on Sunday Sunday seems right I need to check that out all right, no one I know is streaming, so I'm not gonna send. I'm not gonna set up an actual raid because I feel like that's weird to do. But uh, Desert Bus is still going on. If you want to go check them out, um, over on Twitch.tv/DesertBus, and I will see you all tomorrow night. You take care now. Wait, that's not the right buttons. I pushed this button. This button? Yeah, that one. Bye.